Good afternoon, everyone. Jeff Pistola and the HFL media team aboard the Viscount Dreammaker at Hanson Oval on Howard Lane in Mount Barker. As we get set to bring you one of the great traditional clashes in the Mortgage Choice Hills Football League Division 1 season. The hosting Bark Roos take on neighbouring arch rival Harndorf. And of course, all the online coverage is available at hillsfooty.com, live stream on HFL Media Facebook page, and radio broadcast available on Kicking FM at 87.6, 87.8. And of course, as usual, coming to each Saturday, thanks to the great support of Mortgage Choice, Jarrett Nissen, Adelaide Star Buses, Ned Whiskey, and Chris Shaw Accounting. Well, round 12 upon us and the traditional rival set for battle not just in the top of the table clash but it's also the final of the Courier Cup minor round competition so the trophy and prize money up for grabs together with bragging rights extended between two clubs who have been going at it for over half a century so uh, on this Saturday the first Saturday in July as we celebrate the 72nd birthday the great Rocky Sylvester Stallone we have a few Rocky and Rambo type microphone warriors joining us once again Welcome to HFL Media Manager, Robbie Shearwood. Mate, what an intro that was. Mouthful. <laughs> Sensational. And, uh, yeah, isn't it good the the, the weather's, weather gods have um, so, uh, shone down on us again today after last week, which was, you know, everybody saying was one of the worst days they've ever encountered. Absolutely. We must just uh, let everyone know, unfortunately, the Windy Hill Chill has taken its toll on one of our usual members, the great man Shane Collins. Touch of man flu, so no doubt Collo's uh, rugged up next to the medicine cabinet at home, but he'll be listening to us. So we send you all the best, Shane, and hopefully you're back on deck uh, for our next coverage, uh, which will be Lobethal Onkers. Now, meanwhile, I know one member of our team is very excited about the opportunity to watch his beloved Magpies in action. A man who terrorised the opposition in a stellar junior career, donning the black and white. A man who displays as much silk with the microphone as he did with the Sharon. Good afternoon, Benny Goldfinch. Oh, Pistols, great to be here from um, Hanson Oval for this uh, top of the table clash. And interesting to see how the ruse go today. Uh, haven't been in the best of form of late. Six and three in second position on the ladder. They've also got that draw that they had against your Radler. And of course, Handorf unde undefeated at the top of the table. So uh, very much looking forward to this uh, clash. Um, I think Handorf gunning for their fifth career cup in a row. Pistols, is that correct? Fifth Absolutely, fifth in a row, which will be a record. They actually share four in a row at the moment with Mount Barker and also Handorf have done it themselves previously. So, yeah, the uh, the Magpie's up and about. And without further ado, we might welcome one of the uh, the main yeah, men um, to the table who's uh, obviously not playing this afternoon, but uh, has been good enough to give us a bit of time. And, uh, well, no one's kicked more goals than this bloke in the last couple of years of the Hills Football League. And it's a great pleasure to welcome to uh, the core of the world. Darcy Hurrigan. Darcy, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. No, our pleasure, mate. Just quickly, obviously a few people tuning in and also be tuning in uh, later on to see the highlights. Uh, the reason you're not out there, mate? Yeah, just um, pulled up uh, a bit sore uh, from last week and um, tried to get through training, but um, uh, I had to do the right thing by myself and, and the team, obviously, and, and, and have to sit this one out. I got a bit of uh, sore hips and pelvis area, so um, just, uh, yeah, get a rest it up and... Uh, too much action on dance floor, perhaps. Yeah, does. maybe, maybe. A bit of a <laughs> now, I must admit, last week, obviously, the conditions are pretty ordinary. As you can hear it blowing in the background, and uh, Mike's effects here, but uh, nothing like last week. Uh, the sun's out here at Mount Barker, but uh, last week, some of the worst conditions I think you've seen in footy for a couple of years. And uh, I watched the highlights, which you can see on hfl.com. Uh, some magnificent effort. Six goals out of nine in pretty ordinary conditions at Handorf, Darcy. And some of those goals, I've, uh, I know you're a modest man, but <laughs> something special, capital of those snaps. Yeah, a few of those. Um, you know, just they you just kick them and, um, you know, hopefully hopefully they go in and lucky enough they uh, they went in. So, uh, no, it was good to, uh, good to get six out of nine. Um, uh, we fought it out pretty hard against uh, Mount Lofty in the first half. They were, they were pretty competitive um, and they uh, then the weather really came in the second half and it just, just came down to who wanted it more. And, um, and yeah, we got over the line pretty well in the end. Yeah, well, I think 25 in a row, in fact, the last side of the bench, of course, was Mount Barker at this very ground, I think, in last year's Anzac Day mm. night, whatever you want to call it, contest. And yep. so you carried your bat for the rest of the year. And then uh, this year, so I think it's up to 25 successive uh, victories. Um, in that situation, Darcy... Uh, do the players know that, or do they hungry for success? What I'm saying, I suppose each win brings you close to your next loss, and obviously hard off sitting on top of the ladder, you're always the hunted. So, 
What's the approach to the guys? Obviously, you've got to be on your mental. As you said, the competition seems to be tightening up. Even mm. though you're winning, you just can't. You've got to respect every side you go out there and play against. Yeah, of course, mate. Um, obviously, we've got um, we've got a good good side and good youth side coming through from from the young juniors up to the A grade. And uh, yeah, you got to respect every side, mate, because um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's a, it's another game, it's another contest. Um, and there's teams, there's definitely the teams out there that are competitive and have great players as well. Um, and yeah, you just got we just got to roll out for the four quarters, and we just say that every week. Um, start off with one quarter, and then we go from there. I think what you're saying is exemplified by last year. I think in the grand final, apart from yourself, maybe Michael Hanby and uh, might have been Dave Hankin, the Hankin boys. The rest of the side were all junior products of the Harnell Football Club, which is yeah, that's correct. Isn't yeah, it? Oh, it is great. Um, and we're lucky enough to get Matty Edge back and Dil yeah. Matson back from Sturt. Um, and they, you know, they're Harnell juniors from from uh, when they were young fellas. So. Uh, to then, yeah, and then to have the Eckermans, the Leaks, yeah. um, you know, uh, the Troy Parker boys, the Vergara's coming through, uh, 18, 19, 20 year old kids is sensational. And um, and it's great that the full credit to Hunter Football Club for um, bringing them through and, and nurturing them. And um, um, and yeah, and now they're playing A grade footy for the club, which is sensational. And as you said, Darcy has reflected the strength of the club because uh, some of the talent you have running around the reserves at the moment, if we look out in the last quarter, th uh, midway through the last term, uh, Arndolf 9, 7 are leading Mount Barker, 4 goals, 6. So it uh, just displays the depth that's on because obviously uh, it's up to you blokes to push and perform well. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good push and perform well. Yeah. Um, you know, I was the push the yeah. guys in the top game. Top yeah. Top spot. Oh, it is good. Uh, we've got some, and we uh, we've had some uh, injuries through the last few weeks. Um, and um, young Bailey Hoff made his debut um, last week for us, which it was mm. obviously a very hard game for him to come in and play in the wet. Couldn't obviously, you know, show his uh, his, uh, his skills as he, as good as he is. But um, he's out there playing today, and I've watched him, and he's um, he'll be knocking down that door a lot, like Cam Machow and. Yeah. Um, Alex Case we see here there's a lot of boys um, really knocking down the door and it's just a great great spot to be in um, and again there are a lot of them are all Hanoff juniors so it's sensational Now Darcy as I said at the top when you joined us uh, your goal kicking prowess is uh, magnificent kicking a ton in uh, the three, year, three the two of the three years previously uh, this year uh, well big challenge ahead obviously being out today 46 so far so triple figures might be a way off well, yeah. you never know you might kick 20 in a game yeah. but um Obviously, you watch a lot of the AFL and you see a lot of these professional guys, the amount of shots, are easy shots, 30 metres out, that sort of situation. And as I said, you pride yourself on the accuracy. Do you do anything different at trade? Do you actually have a stipulated session where you allow yourself time for shots on goals? Um, oh, well, yeah, we... Uh, Something I believe they don't do at AFL clubs. No, they? well, we have a bit of a... Well, I'm, we started this game about... Um, Oh, probably th oh, three years ago or something we do you have a, at the end of the training we actually um, all the forwards and the mids that roll through the forward we have a bit of a goal kicking competition um, as much as we turn it into a bit of farm we have three shots from uh, where we have a po shot from each pocket right, right in front and um, and at the end of the day we are we want to be kicking the goals and it is a bit of fun but mm. we are trying to put each other off yeah. and going through the routines but um, what we do is this, uh, the guy that kicks the least goals um, actually buys a box at the end of the game and uh, so it's a bit of an incentive to kick well, and because um, you don't want to be buying a box every week. So it's a bit of you know, it's a bit of fun, well, but a bit of uh, serious at the same time. And I think it's, it, it oh, we we haven't been kicking as great as we probably could this this year, but uh, we're getting there. Probably won't yeah. affect you at the moment, Dars, because yeah. uh, as I know you're doing the dry, dry July. Yeah, the dry July. Course. Just yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm me, me and me and my big mate Lukey Roberts um, uh, sent our forward for us. Uh, we we thought. Uh, uh, we'd uh, we have a bit of a break off of it, and um, uh, we thought, oh, you know, it would be a good chance to do Dry July and raise some money. We were raising money for the McGrath Foundation. Fantastic. Um, just to, uh, yeah, so we, I think that's a great cause to choose for and help out with the, the, uh, all the cancers and that going on. So, mm. um, so no beers after the game today or for the next couple of weeks, but um, no, nah, it's a, going for a good cause. So, yeah. I know another cause that's really close to your heart and having been through a similar situation, the Beyond Blue yeah. situation. As mm. we said, just look after your mates, talk to them. And yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a that's a big thing for me and very close to heart to me mm. about uh, the whole the men, mental health yes. for men's and stuff. And there are some very alarming stats. So if, you know, if you n just always be checking up, if I can say anything, it's just to yeah. check up on your old man, check up on your mates. Um, 
uh, uh, your brothers and that. Just always make sure we're all doing well out there. And uh, and then at the end of the day, if, you, if you're struggling, it's it's okay to talk and um, and we get we'll get through it all to, all as once. And um, but yeah, it's very important to speak out if you need it. I believe. Call it a wild round 12 uh, pre-match here. We're coming to you from Hanson over in Mount Bark for the Harndorf Mount Bark Career Cup Grand Final uh, Clash. And we've been lucky enough to be joined by uh, the competition's leading full forward in uh, Darcy Hurrigan, unfortunately missing today with a little just of uh, soreness, I suppose we call it, Darcy. A um, yep. couple of weeks ago, you actually uh, turned out uh, water rep Guernsey. How, did, how much did you enjoy that? Yeah, that was great. I thought uh, it's my fifth year here now on HFL and I probably uh, haven't played... Um, haven't played one year, and I thought, oh, you know what? They are, they've asked me every year, and I've sort of, mm. I have been. There's been times where I have been sore and all, all of that, and need to look after my body and be 100% for Handorf. But uh, for uh, this year, I was feeling fine. I thought, oh, yeah, you know, I'll give it, a, give it a crack. And it was, uh, yeah. Having it was, your regular coach Matt yeah, Golding yeah, involved too, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, Maddie's a great man and um, a very good coach. So we're very lucky at Handorf. Um, but yeah, no, it was great, and uh, all the boys there are great, you know, to play alongside some of the boys who play each week. Um, yeah, it's funny, I think, Darcy, great. you could probably say the similar thing that a lot of people say in that situation, oh, they play against Hardoff and these guys, and they, you know, think such and such is a so and so. When you get to actually in a team situation yeah. you're playing with, you realise yeah. they're not bad blokes, they're like me and you. And yeah, that's you're right. sort of next time yeah. you play them, you go and have a chat, Jake Anders, you know, you've yeah. got a bit of a bond then. Yeah, no, it is great, it is great like that, and especially. Um, <clears throat> even if you know, we'd be love to be running out um, today. And mm. as soon as we cross that line, we 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 don't we dislike Mount Barker hundred percent. I was going to say, yeah, is there know. certain games that you live for, and this would be one of them? Mount Barker. Oh yeah, we 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 d we dislike each other hundred percent on the field, mate. But it's uh, the best part of this this Hills Football League. We're all pretty pretty close nip, I think. And you know, they've got a couple of real good good boys out there and uh, at the end of the game win or lose, draw, you yeah. know, we're having a beer after the game. I think that's, that's pretty exemplified a uh, fantastic uh, event that they put on an Anzac Day, the two yeah. clubs, and uh, as you said, they all get together after. But uh, you know the way they honour the diggers and honour the occasion. That uh, you know it's all uh, two for mile fighting for it, but they all get together, and it's just a great kindred ship between the two clubs. Oh, it is great. It's a, it's a, yeah. I really, really uh, am. Um, you know, it's an, it's an honour and privilege. You're not a privilege and honour mm. to play on that day for what they did and, um, and how they fought for the country, and then um, and then to be able to play. Um, you know, a great team in uh, Mount Barker yeah. and the rivalry that they've got is wherever they are on the ladder. There's always a key. Oh, it's always it is always it is always like that. And um, yeah, and the, well done the HFL and and then Hindorf and Mount Barker mm. for really getting behind it and um, and making it uh, run. And, uh, yeah, it was it's always a great game. It is. It was a great. Of course, the RSL game. getting on board as well. Yeah, it is. Um, and the RSL, yeah. Now you're not out there today, but uh, as you said, you would love to be out there. Plus these lovely conditions, but uh, one of your teammates had a, a special milestone for him today. Uh, yeah, he the stallion, the two hundred up. Yeah, we call him the goat. The goat. The greatest the stallion, of all time. The goat. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the greatest of all time, big Scotty Pearls. Yeah, and no, mate, he's um, he's just a, he's just a general down there, and he's he's just so calm and collected, and he just you know a high ball's coming in, or he'll throw his body on the line, or you trust him with a kick in or mark, and he's just he's just a great person, great family man, and great bloke to have around the club. Um, mm. So I wish him all the best for his 200th game and yeah. hopefully boys can get it done for him. The only young man still does, 24? 23. 23, yeah. 23 sorry, yeah. making you sound older. No, yeah, that's um, all right. Any aspirations? Of course, you're the third youngest fella yeah. to play league football for South Adelaide. Any mm. aspirations perhaps to turn to the elite grade of footy? Or? Um, yeah, the, it's been up in the air the last couple of years of what I want to do and where You've I'm going to go. you had any approaches, but obviously I've yeah, I have, issues, I, yeah. I have I've had a few phone calls and I've just... Had to take a step back, and at the moment, uh, I'm very uh, happy with where I am at Handorf. Um, I'm I starting doing a little bit of junior junior work with some of the kids and stuff, and we're trying to uh, trying to promote that a bit more because that's a big thing for me um, having uh, all the young kids um, coming up, and that's what you know, like we spoke about before, the uh, the uh, Ekemens of Vergara's coming through. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm very comfortable and happy at Handorf. Um, it's a great club to be around. So at the moment, yeah. I'm pretty pretty comfortable and happy to stay there. And I tell you what, what I like, obviously I've seen you a few times play footy, uh, Das. Not just a full forward. I just yeah. like the way that you work really hard when the ball's not in your possession and yeah. to get possession and even up the field. Uh, you know, obviously a full forward, but is any hinkering there to play further up the field, or are you just happy <laughs> being the goal square and letting them work? No, nah. <laughs> no, nah, I think I'll be happy with about the 30 yard, mate. Um, haven't haven't quite got the engine. Uh, to be running up in the midfield, but it is good to um, if you you know you're not having a great 
great start of the game or a great quarter to try and get up the ground a bit, get a couple of touches on in your hands. But um, no, I'll leave that leave that to Dill Matson and Matty Ench is running the ball down. I reckon. Well, having said that, um, I just about to say, even a great junior product in a club like Goldie, he could probably come and kick a hundred goals in A grade because the silver service is a full forwards dream, as you just said. A couple of Matson, uh, yeah. the silky one, Matty Yench, of course, Kyle yeah. Genie, that just you know the midfield that you got in front of you is just unbelievable feet yeah it, it is great it is great and then we've got you know on the wings we, like we've and Troy Parker boards the young fella he's in the midfield start mid um and then we've got um you know Vergara and a few of the boys on the mm. wings mm. um that all very quick and run, run it down quite well so um no we we are very lucky with some of the service we do get and um yeah Call of the Wild here, coming to you from Hanson over in Mount Barker. Darcy Hurrigan from Hardell Football Club, his sideline this afternoon is joining us. In the reserves, we're into the last uh, four or so minutes, and it looks like Hardell are going to continue their undefeated run. I think it is Darcy, 11 10 to 4 6. So the reserves, as we said, just showing the depth they have at Hardell. Now, Darcy, not wanting yeah. to put you on the spot because no one will be listening to this, only yeah. you and me. Um, which teammate hogs the mirror at Hardell? Holds the mirror? You know, in preparation, you know, like make sure he looks in the mirror and. Oh, it'd have, have to, well uh, have to be Matty Yench. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it'd have to be, it'd have to be Matty Yench, mate. I reckon uh, he'd, he'd be up there looking. He'd always look, make sure he's looking good out there. Um, but um, like the bloke like Dill Matson, mate, he doesn't have to do anything, mate. He knows when you've kicked a ton on a couple of occasions. Yeah, Matty's always the first one to get around because obviously he knows the camera's going to be on. Yeah. Dar celebrate, and I want to be in this. No, bit of me time for the silky man. Yeah, no, he's a great man, Matty Yench. Um, he's a great leader. He's a great bloke to have around the club. But um, and it, yeah, he's just he's just a funny old bugger. He brings a lot of humour to the club. He's mm. pretty funny looking too. But now, which uh, which teammate, if you're out, uh, if it was a dry July, you're out and about. Uh, who would be the magpie teammate that sort of uh, be the uh, whispers, never shouts situation? Oh, that'd be a Nick Ingram. The, the comb over man. N- comb over man, Nick Ingram. Uh, you don't want to be getting in around with him because I tell right? you, he'd be he'd be his turn to go. And he's and he's gone. So Nick Ingram's the man. Oh, he's for in that the one. next school over there. Yeah, he's gone. Now, um, who's the best? Uh, who's the best ruckman out of the Roberts trio? Which one would you pick to ruck for your life? <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, not putting you on the spot here, big fella. <laughs> I'm going to say Dan because he's bigger than me. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> if he wasn't bigger than you, <laughs> still Dan. <laughs> And uh, memorable moment, I suppose, because you played a couple of flags, kicking the 100. I know that's an individual award, but obviously yeah. you're a team player. So winning that first flag for Handoff, particularly that had come from bottom the year before, that must yeah. have been something special to be involved. And, of course, your man Dan Roberts in the last quarter yeah. turned it on, mate. Oh, I did. Uh, yeah, that was pretty special because, obviously, um, I knew the reason I went there is I knew a few of the boys there, mm. a few of the people that run in the show, and, and they did have a really good junior uh, program. Um, so... Um, yeah, no, that was obviously out of the um, out of the blue, to be honest. Obviously, if a club's finishing bottom, yeah, um, and then uh, you know we, well, I think we finished fourth, and mm. um, and then we, uh, yeah, yeah, we just went, we just kept improving, Followed going. The went path of the, the chunga the previous season. Yeah, yeah, so you know we we, we didn't think that was going to be that was going to happen, but um, oh, we're very very happy that it did, and um, and just come down to hard work and. And just belief, I think, was the main thing. We knew, we knew we had a good enough team on the park, and and yeah, we just just kept kept grinding it out. I got to ask you something uh, special. Obviously, a couple of weeks ago, because uh, of the promotion of Nan, and uh, you got yeah. to play against uh, the sibling and Jack. Yeah, no, that was good. How's that? Did he give you a bit of lip out there? Or? No, 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 because I think it, I think I think we were You're a bit uh, bigger than him. Yeah, a bit bigger, a bit bigger than him, and uh, I think we, were, you know. Uh, had had the had the bookies um, ticket to really give him give him a bit of a wit, uh, bit of a, actually, bit of a but it wasn't actually a too bad a score to be honest. I mean, they yeah. held their own man and the, the, Nan's got like a, I went and watched them against uh, Blackwood and yeah they're not a bad yeah not a bad young side so it's, it's we'd seen them uh, previously actually the week before and they actually last quarter had ten goals kicked in by yeah. Chunga it certainly didn't wasn't that didn't reflect their effort yeah, yeah. because uh, everything fell for them at the game against. Blackwood yeah. and, uh, yeah. No, no, it's good. It's yeah, good on them. I, I, I think that's very, really good that they um, came up and uh, yeah, you know took the took the challenge. And it's going to be hard for the next couple of years, but uh, they'll get a few more boys there and um, and keep hanging on the young juniors, mate. And that, they'll be up there in no time. So uh, no, Jack's loving it out there. So the uh, Lackers is a great coach, great bloke. Yeah. I know Lackers, and he's a 
He's a very good man and uh, he, he's the right man for the job, I think. Uh, they've just got to yeah, hold on to him and hold on to a few of the young kids. And, and speaking of uh, coaches, and just a bit of differentiate here, we don't want to say who's better, but uh, just the two, obviously, at Handorf, Craig Smith and uh, Matty Gold, both premiership coaches, are they similar or just... Oh, they're definitely similar. They um, definitely have their own different game plans and their different ideas and structures and, and all of that. Um, but uh, I uh, was lucky enough to have Goldie down at South Adelaide when I was there as well, so... Um, to have him there, uh, and um, so I, I got along with him, knew knew a lot about him and what he's doing. Yeah. So if I was going to pick someone, it you know probably would be Matt Goldie, but Craig 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 it, Smith it was a great good, coach. Uh, assistant coach, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> but Craig Smith, no, nah, he was a good coach, and he and he did a lot of work for Hindorf and got us in a got us in a good spot and set us up quite well. So. Okay, the final signs just gone here in the reserves. It's hard off 11 10 have defeated Mount Barker. Four goal, seven in the round 12 reserves game here at Hans. No, it was the precursor to the uh, the big Career Cup final. And uh, Darcy Hurrigan's with us, which is going to uh, pick his brain before he leaves us. Uh, Darcy, what would be the. Uh, well, it wouldn't be any different, but perhaps, as you said, the guys rise a bit because I suppose a little bit of. Uh, Hardware on the line tonight, so yeah. silverware, but also playing Mount Barker. So, yeah. what have been the message from the coach? Um, I think the message from the coach would just be to um, just stick, stick play how we've been playing the last couple of years, uh, stick to the structures and, and all that. Obviously, in the back of our minds, um, we we you know we lost we lost these boys here la last mm. year, so mm. that's definitely in the back of the mind that we don't want to make that don't want, don't want to make this place a place where we come and we lose. So we want to rectify that and uh, make sure we get the job done. Um, and um, yeah, just keep playing good footy, fun footy, and um, and yeah, win it for the uh, for Scotty Perlin. What do you like as a, What do you like as a watch? Watching footy, does? Um, Probably haven't had done it too. Much. I haven't had to do it often, and I can't have a beer and sit and watch it. Yeah, so, oh, well. um, it would just be a nice uh, can of solo, I think, and watch the boys well, and, nice and just watch then. watch the forward line and um, help them out and. Uh, and just let, yeah, just manage them a bit and see if Goldie needs anything. So we're good. Right. And a nice day in the sun. No, I'm saying, yeah, it is a cracker out there. Right? Spewing about it. Uh -huh. Last week was bloody shocking, but all right, mate. All well, good, we hope, boys. We hope everything comes good for you. And we look forward to seeing you back in action later in the season. Thanks for no joining us on the call to all, Darcy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, boys. Good luck. Thanks. Darcy Hurrigan joining us there on HFL Media Corner of Wild and uh, as we said, not playing this afternoon through uh, well, a bit of a sore groin, sore hips, but uh, yeah. But anyway, it'll be interesting to see how they cover him. So we'll be back uh, here shortly at Hanson Oval in Mount Barker. HFL Media Round 12 action coming here from Hanson Oval in Mount Barker. And, uh, well, as we mentioned uh, earlier in the call, our man Colo got a dose of the, uh, the man flu, unfortunately, with us on his deathbed. So we hope, uh, no doubt, young Tate is running around looking after him. So all the best to you, Tate. Don't let him wear you out. Don't let him be lazy. But uh, Jaden Hill, Jaden and uh, Indy will be doing the stats this afternoon. Jaden, welcome uh, welcome aboard. Hey, cheers. Thanks, Bristol. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me today. Um, so uh, just a stat to start you off. So um, the average scoring shots against Mount Barker here at Mount Barker this year is 15.8, and um, and Handolf averaged 33 scoring shots away. So uh, that could be a bit of a uh, problem for the Mount Barker defence um, here. But hopefully they can uh, keep keep this uh, scoring shots low. Um, the head to head. I have um, is uh, Mount, since 2010 is Mount Barker 12 to Handolf 9. Average seven, uh, ten goals here against Handorf, um, and ha Handorf only average eight goals here. So uh, could uh, could be depends how the weather is, but um, might be a, you know get to the 60, 60, 70 uh, score mark maybe. But um, yes, yeah, it really depends how Mount Barker's um, uh, defence holds up today. So um, yeah, there we go. And or just another stat: um, since two thousand and ten, ha um, ha Handorf average um, nine goals against Mount Barker. Um, at uh, just in in general as well. So uh, there's another stat for you today, Jeff. Good on you, Jaden Hill. As we'll cross out the Robbie Shield and Ben Goldfinch in the centre of the ground. We're out here in the middle of uh, Hanson Oval, Rob. Perfect conditions today. We're just waiting for both uh, captains to come out and toss the coin. Bit of a breeze. Yeah, probably uh, three. I'd say Goldie heading down towards. Shall we toss the grass. 
across the grass. Yeah, probably three goal heading down to the uh, Worcester. Just got to face. Yep. Yeah. So. Right, uh, pistols. That's better. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, probably three goal, Goldie. Uh, three goals, I reckon, Goldie. Got Dylan Madsen coming in to toss the coin here for Handorf, and uh, Scott Perling's two hundredth. So looking forward to seeing uh, the big stallion in action today. Just waiting for the. Uh, Thomas. Mark Thomas. After this. So in they come. Toss of the coin. Thomas has called heads. He's won the toss. Tomo. Just one word. And I was really looking forward to it. Yeah, simple as that. Simple as that. <laughs> Short and man, sweet. There you go. Game face is on. <laughs> so, yeah, no, Rob, Rob, uh, looking forward to this clash, how they respond after the Anzac game uh, thrashing, and Tomo's got the uh, the game face on there. Yeah, and it uh, be interesting to see how uh, Houndorf the Dwarf go without Big Das. So, um, yeah, looking forward to a close game. So, and uh, Barker kick with the with the breeze down to the towards the Wisto Road end. Okay, thank you very much, Rob Shearwood and Benny Goldfinch bring you all the action out at the uh, coin toss. So uh, both sides just going to the final huddle here in preparation for this the Korea Cup final, which of course is based on the uh, positions of the two sides throughout the uh, first half of the minor round season. Next time they meet in each particular grade. There is the uh, Korea Cup up for um, decision. And, of course, I think Mount Barker winning earlier in the Mini Colts earlier this morning against Harndorf. So the, the two senior sides squaring off. And both these sides, actually, 35 years of Korea Cup uh, competition, Goldie, and uh, they are the two sides have won the most. Harndorf have had 10 wins, Mount Barker six, and Harndorf are chasing a record five in a row in that competition. So, uh, And both clubs, Harndorf and Mount Barker, have actually won, uh, jointly hold the record at the moment of four in a row, so uh, all the stats being brought in here. Do we know if uh, Colo's won a uh, Courier Cup at any stage in his stellar career? Uh, no, I wouldn't think so. Maybe he might uh, text send, us in. Or send not us on Facebook. Not, not when they won the Premiership? No, I don't think that no. year, no. No, not back then, but uh, anyway, no doubt he'll be... Uh, oh, I didn't give me much there, Pistols. No, I hope he's all right. Um, Oh, Tom, you know, the fresh man, no, he's got the uh, fresh face on. <laughs> he, didn't, uh, he didn't want to chat at all. <laughs> no, which is fair enough. Which like I, that girl on the first day, day, Goldie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, uh, working this out, Goldie, Mount Barker will be going towards the uh, Wellington Road Wellington end. Wellington Road end, yeah. The uh, hospital road end, for those who know Mount Barker. And, um, Handoff just moving position, as we said. The Stallion, one of our uh, great mans, or has uh, renamed the GOAT, as uh, Darcy yeah, Hurrigan suggested. Yep. So all and ready just now here. Courier Cup final, first versus second on the ladder and uh, possibly a uh, preview of the grand final, boys. But um, just have to wait and see. So, so up Dan, this afternoon. Dan Roberts in the run. And Glenn Godfrey is a holds the ball well off and we're away. Round 12 action, Courier Cup final. Roberts up against Giles. Ball comes out. Hamby had the ball dispossessed there. Scrambly play, no clearance initially, so uh, James Hughes locking up Hamby there, Hughes a late inclusion into the Mount Barker side. Coach this afternoon in the absence of Scott Titterman by Simon Noonan. Yeah, I noticed you got the uh, board out there, Pistols. Lovely conditions here. Here's a chance for the 200 game as Stalin gets a handball, intercepted by Hughes. Held up there, Tommy Hughes that is, he's wrapped up there by the man in a moment in Pearling, the 200 gamer. Tommy's and got the game face on. Once again, the umpire will come in and recommence play. Right in the cricket pitch area. Opening term here. Tap down. This will probably hear the wind, a little bit of wind here. But as Goldie said, otherwise perfect conditions. Sun shining, which is far removed from last. We get a windy hill. And uh, once again, we apologise for the stream problems we had there. But uh, you can't organise the weather, that's for sure, Goldie. So, centre-half board area for the ruse. Giles went up. Ball at ground level. Big man butters up. Managed to get a kick away at centre half forward. Sweeping handball over the top to Dylan Madsen for the Magpies. He kicks it out towards us in the broadcasting position. Backing back. Oh, almost a mark there. Good work by uh, Grouch with the pressure for the Ruse. 
Looking good early here, Mount Barker. Tom Hughes with the kick inside 50, taken by Kyle Cheney. Relieving kick, and it's taken out there for the Magpies. Kick into the middle of the ground, though. It's cut off by Matt Chapman. He kicks it inside 50 and spots up Bruce. So William Bruce, Bruce uh, William, uh, William, uh, William the Bruce. So Ryan Wienhofer, the look alike. Look -alike. The look alike. Ryan Wienhofer. Yeah, so the doormat look alike. Doormat phase two. So young Ryan Wienhofer, one of the young Barkaroo Brigade, spent some time in the ranks down at Sturt. So Wienhofer towards Wellington Road end. He'd be just outside the 50 arc, sets on his way. He'll drop in top of the pack. In fact, it does clear the pack through for a minor score. The first of the afternoon in favour of Mount Barker. And on the uh, Colos score. Uh, goal square you don't have. We haven't got a uh, scoreboard here at the moment as well. So No power. No power perhaps up here. Man. Uh, could be that this afternoon in the showdown, Rob. Uh, so there's a kick out by Yedge. Goes cleverly out wide. Looking for a teammate there. Looks like it's Cheney's Cheney. former Crow teammate. Handball's back Williams. here. Looks like it's Williams. And hard to get out of trouble there Staples, through the age of uh, Staples, I think it was. Well, good mark here for the Roos. Just trying to pick up the player. It might be Lions, is it? Yep. Malachi Lions. Played into league. So centre wing near the interchange area. Goes inside 50 and a good mark. Wiedenhofer, he's got a few marks early inside 50. So the Roos peppering here. So Wiedenhofer, he'll lob it to within about 30 metres out from goal. But cut off there for the Magpies by Troy Parker-Bowers. Parker-Bowers goes back to Yetch and turn goes back here to Leek. Leek gets a high kick in front of the Dreammaker broadcast area out here towards the camp. The... Uh, Came over man in Ingram, winning the ball at ground level was uh, the Swan Montgomery he's put down. Pack forms there, coming to assist him was a teammate in Hughes, but the ball held to him, so the umpire will come in and uh, recommence play. I said right on the Dream Maker wing canteen side. Giles Roberts do battle. Quick handball out there to Thomas. The freshman ran the corner, gets it back, getting back his uh, getting his hand to it was Perling. In Free the meantime, kick. looks like infringed off the ball was uh, Worthley, is it? No, it's going to go to uh, Dale Payne. So a uh, new inclusion, recent inclusion in the team, the senior level. So Payne, the opportunity here to post the first goal of the game. Be a difficult kick with the wind uh, blowing across the ground as he goes towards the Wellington Road end. So Payne switches it up. High, it's blown off line through for another minor score. So Mount Bark with all the scores on the board at the moment. They're two behinds. Handoff yet. Uh, really haven't got the ball past centre at this stage of the game, Goldie. We've played, uh, just trying to work out here. It's some uh, come out the five minute mark, I'd suggest. Well, there is a bit of a breeze out there, as Rob picked up. Probably a three to four goal breeze, we reckon, going towards the, um, the Wellington Road end. Just waiting for the ball to come in. Here we got here, Pistols. Yench again. We'll see what the kick's like here. So, Yench, he'll go from the goal square. Lob it to within outside the 50. Roberts, good mark from the big man. Looking to move it on quickly, is he? And goes back. Eckerman kicks it along the wing. Luke Roberts, the intended target out there, out towards the boundary line. And it'll go out of bounds with uh, Nick Hankin pistols. Yes, I was going to say, we haven't seen a lot of him this season in the long sleeves here to say. I think it'll be one of his uh, first games in the Magpies Colours. Of course, a Premiership player last year. So the boundary... Throw and take place at the members' balcony. High pitched ball. Grutch Gavo Roberts Daniel double hands it down. And in the meantime, the ball uh, catches the slope and rolls back over, virtually in the same position. So the boundary umpire will virtually repeat his uh, action of uh, about 30 seconds ago. Comes in a bit further this time to get more ploy on the ball. So sets it up once again. Roberts and Giles. And Giles in front. Roberts over the top for Harnoff. Got it down. Taken away by Madsen, but he's not going too far as he's wrapped up in a, a strong tackle there by young Manny Chapman. For the Roos, so once again the Ruckman will gather. Yep, Roberts versus Giles. Giles just grabbed it out of the ruck. A little bit of a toe poke to Bruce. He moves it on quickly to Tommy Hughes, the male medalist from the past. Kicks his wide center up forward to A to Z over the top of Perling. Oh, the big man busts his way out through to Yench and he goes in the middle of the ground. And the Magpies will move the ball forward through Williams. Williams goes forward. Oh, that's Salt a good uh, good mark there Salt. by Salt and Pepper. Adds a bit of spice to forward line, puts it up forward over the top. Bark Barkey's a chance here for Ingram, Ingram grabbers. He'll handball to a man on line. Oh, desperate tackle there, but I think in the end it was... Came over, got it. Yep, it was toe poked through by Ingram in the end, but uh, desperate defence from Handoff nearly thought at that. But, uh, yeah, Ingram just getting his boot the ball. So uh, we played eight minutes, I'd suggest, and Handoff the first major on the ball. 
through the agency of Ingram. But I tell you what, Robbie Shearwood, great strong attack launch that from centre half back through the two yeah. of the game man, Perling. Yep, yeah, Perling, great great hands off to the running Rob, player and hang on. Take it down. Better? A bit more. A bit more? Too close? A bit closer. Closer? That's better. Okay, we'll try that again, boys. Yeah, good running play pistols. Hang on, Rob. Anyway, back into cell. We'll get back to Rob. We're just having a bit technical uh, difficulty there on the boundary line, but uh, ball taken away by Mount Barker. And attack is a chance for Yentz. Butters up, gets a high kick, clearing kick, gets out in the direction of the teammate out here in Vagara, but taking a good mark for the ruse is Billy Stokes. Stokes sends the ball back inside 50. Over the top there was Wortley. Sorry, it was Andrew Skovitz. Assists by Wortley, but in the meantime, the ball out over the boundary line, right in the uh, old scoreboard pocket, for those who will remember it. Cricket net pocket, as it is now. Go again, Rob. So we'll get in Rob Sherwood. That's better. a lot better, Rob. Much better. Just got to get that you must have that Collos uh, microphone. The one, you know, one, the one that's got the germs on it. Eh? So, meanwhile, Henry De Bruce, sorry, uh, William De Bruce has a shot from Not the pocket. Sure it's gone straight there. across the face. In fact, Hayden? marked in the pocket there, palmed off by... Hayden, I think it is. Yes, yeah, Sam Hayden. Sam Hayden in the uh, right back pocket for Handoff, right next to the behind post. As we've played uh, nearly 10 minutes, it's Handoff one straight, leading Mount Barker two points. Here on call the wild round 12. So Dylan Madsen, I believe it is pistols. He goes, crosses out. Oh, dangerous, dangerous kick. That's William De Bruce. Could have been a free kick there. Good buttering up by Joel Leak. He kicks it out towards us in the broadcasting position. Vergara versus Tommy Hughes. Coming in, is that Hankin? Yep, Nick Hankin goes back to Cole Chaney for the Magpies. Good handball over to Vergara, and the Magpies are away. Vergara drives up the half forward line over the top there, bringing the ball to ground. It was uh, Nykamp. Good strong play, and also by Luke Roberts. Oh, looks like he got one in the melon as he's gone down behind play. Bit of physical stuff there as the ball's cleared up towards Matty Chapman. Stands his ground well. Goes Staples, taken by Madsen. He's dispossessed by Chapman. Ball on the deck. Flicked out there by Whedon off it, but taken away by Sammy Williams. Short toe poke finds Hankin. He measures his kick, but he uh, nearly picked out Ross Brooks there. Could have got a free kick, no, said the umpire. Coming in there for Mount Barker, taken there by Bruce, as in Henry Variety. They go across to go forward. This is, could come undone here. It's under mates of pressure. Picked up by the Ruse, taken by Roberts, who's recovered from that head knock. Has a shot at goal, and I tell you what, oh, that was a work. costly switch of play by the Ruse. Yep. Good pressure there by uh, Handorf, putting the ball to ground, and Luke Roberts... Uh, Finishing off with a, uh, a pretty good snap goal on the end, Goldie. I was going to say, Pistols, uh, Mount Barker have brought the intensity early, but uh, still hand off with a couple of goals on the on the board, Rob. Yeah, that was soft, uh, yeah bad turnover, that one, so it cost them dearly. We're going back to the old scoreboards here. We're going to get the uh, the chalk out, chalkboard. So what are we, <laughs> two goal one? Uh, two straight, to play Mount Barker, two behind, and add on a couple of bits, I think we've come up to about 10 minutes, have expired here in the first term, and it's the Curry right, Cup we final. We're it's just loading up. Like they're loading up here. <laughs> so back in the centre, Daniel Roberts, Giles, crashing it through there, for Handoff was Parker Boz, ball at ground level, held in the cricket pitch area, and the umpire will come in The and mouse border. is just loading up. Yeah, solid. Screens. So we could have a scoreboard action here in a minute. So up they go. Fisted away from Matty Johns, who's on the ground for the ruse. Hughes, Hughes fumbled it. Yep. Taking oh. advantage as Williams sells a bit of candy as he gives himself space to drive the ball forward up here to Robert's eye. Almost a falcon. So it come off the big fella's melon. Locked up there by the Mount Barker defence. And, uh, well, highs and lows for Luke Roberts. A good snap goal. And then, uh, bang, one in the melon from the football. Yep. Falcon. Inside 50 here for the Pies. Couple of goals early. Williams. He's been comes in Comes out, everything. snap around the corner. And uh, it's a minor score. Yeah, Williams has been in everything, boys, hasn't he? A bit like uh, Salt in previous games. I reckon that was Nick Hanker with the shot there. Pistols on his right. So, kick in here for Lines from Mount Barker. It goes out. It'll be two on ones. Perling floating across. Backing back with Stokes. Coming through with Sam Hayden for the Pies, trying to paddle it on to Cheney. Oh, Jamie Grouch comes in. Gang tackle over oh, the boundary Cheney, line. That's holding the nut. Cheney and Wortley, yeah. Good work by Wortley. So he gets a result and free kick. But as you said, good work by the Ruse there on Cheney. So Wortley runs around the man on the mark. Gets Shame. a bit of wobbly kick. Stokes fumbles it. Picked up there by Handoff. Relieving kick and just uh, falls back to Wortley, the man who actually launched that passage of play. So Wortley just in front of the Dream Maker here. Centre wing area. High kick as the man on the mark came close to him. Set it under his leak. Leaps. 
Got his hand to it. Uh, Chapman gets the ball. He's wrapped up in a big, strong tackle by Leek. Yep. So uh, they're not going anywhere. So the umpire will come in and ball up right on the edge. I'd suggest the 50-metre arc as Mount Barker walk towards the Wellington Road end. So it's inside 50 for the Ruse here. Another one, Bruce, cleared by Yench. It'll, oh, a bit <laughs> of a, I was going to say that bounce could go anywhere. Hankin goes to Buckley. He moves it on quickly, goes to the half forward line. Luke Roberts will try and collect it here. Oh, good oh, work well, at the man. bounce there to Salt. Salt shows a bit of toe, kicks for goal. And it's gone through for out of bounds. So good movement there bounds. for the Pies. What? Yeah, good running there. The young fella, he could have probably five. taken another couple of steps and um, had a, a direct shot on goal. I tell you what, boys, quite removed from last week's conditions where the ball would have gone uh, splashed in the uh, <laughs> Vietnamese rice paddy. Uh, <laughs> this week, uh, the bounce is, uh, yeah, it's That's really cool. fine. That was cool of the season, that one. <laughs> that okay, so a... <laughs> Matt John's doing the ruck work for uh, Barkaroos, gets the ball down. Luke Roberts again active at ground level. Rugby style scrum there. In there was uh, Barnett, I think, for the uh, Barkeries. And finally, the umpire will come in and call for a ball up. Dangerous position here would be some 30 metres out from Alexandrina Road in, which handle for King doing this first quarter as they lead 2-1 to 2 behinds. And, uh, well, the scoreboard clock is not working, but uh, we estimate oh, 13 minutes now. gone, I'd say, Goldie. Yep. Two goals, one to two points. Handoff lead. Breeze going Mount Barker's way. Still Rob, is it? Yeah, still... So the Roos move the ball along towards the green shed, and that's gone out of bounds. Oh, it's a similar situation here at Mount Barker, boys. It seems to blow across from the scoreboard across the ground more than anything. But as you said, perhaps Barker Roos marginally favoured with it in this quarter. But uh, as I said, they had the early running, but only raised two minor scores. Mount uh, Handel have taken up the other end, and they've kicked two straight. So 2-1 uh, to two points as the boundaries throw in. Uncontested, taken away by Matt Roberts. Feeds that into Buckley. Quick kick around the corner. There were Brooks with a good spoil on hand. The ball comes to ground. Wing harder is Henry Bruce looking for the sanctuary in the boundary line. But in the meantime, the umpire said he was uh, slam dunked in that. Uh, something you'll see in the uh, next door court from the Mavericks. So a slam dunk free kick paid to Henry to Bruce. So Henry Bruce goes long. Matt Roberts will back back. Got a hand to it. Ball hits the deck. Kick forward for the... Ruse, here's a chance for Wortley. He goes for goal. Touched. How will the bounce go? It's gone through for a minor score. So the Ruse go to three points, I believe, Pistols. Yep, three behinds, plays two goal, one. And coming out to 15 minutes gone this first term, the Courier Cup final. Mount Barker and Hardorf going at it, as they have done for over 100 years. Great tradition. One of the, I'd arguably say, perhaps the greatest tradition uh, rivalry in Hills football. Rob, so, your thoughts? Yeah, I know. I don't know about you boys, but you just look at the size of the Handorf players. They're massive compared to the Barker boys. Well, there, there, here's a big, massive man. He puts in a massive performance in uh, Perling. Had the ball, but uh, Grouch over the top of him. It was a line ball decision, so the umpire will come in and boil it up. So, Shrub Sherwood said this big Handorf side, Mount Barker, though, showing plenty of uh, desire early on. Batty John's got the tap out. Fumbly play there. Putting his head down was uh, Parker Boz. Feeds it out to Buckley, gets a quick left footer away. Waiting there is the uh, co-captain and Thomas, the freshman, drives a short pass in and finds a teammate there in Jake Woodhouse. Woodhouse goes forward. Ruse have got quite a few inside 50s. We'll find out uh, shortly how many, I reckon. Uh, sweeping handball out. Trying, to, well, it's taken by Nick Hankin for the Pies. Centre-half back goes towards centre-half forward. Who's down there? Luke Roberts. Oh, carnage against Nightcamp. Lines for the ruse clears the ball. Yeah, it was a friendly fire there for poor old uh, Cooper Nightcamp under the uh, under the uh, in the deck chair uh, area. And, uh, Luke Roberts just climbed away over the top of him, and as uh, Goldie said, just around from the scoreboard ball out on the full uh, by the uh, interchange and the coaching box. Uh, of course, Mount Barker being led this afternoon by Simon Noonan, his first uh, official stint as an A grade coach. Of course, Scott yeah. Titterman away, sunning himself. He's probably away with Colo. Colo tells us he's cooked, Robert. He's probably <laughs> back in Bali, I'd suggest, with the... Uh, obviously, the dogs winning last week. The, uh, the academy money would have come in for him from the Colo's school Ooh. of kicking. But meanwhile, the ball held up a there. a hard clash. Yeah, hard clash, but it looks like there's been Who's a free that? kick paid to Hardorf. Hey, Rob, uh, in, Indy's uh, stepping in for stats today. We'll go yeah. to him shortly for some stats. Yeah, we'll go to Indy. Up for it. Meanwhile, Handy. Handy. So your pistols. Hamby drives the ball forward. Madsen takes oh, a good well grab done. here. Wastes no time and goes towards the open goal. Bounce, bounce, oh. bounce. But uh, unfortunately offline. But uh, looking dangerous every time they move forward. Down to Indy and uh, welcome aboard Call of the Wild. 
Uh, good day, guys. Pleasure to be here, obviously. Um, so the inside 50 count has been heavily in favor of Barkaroos. Um, obviously, it's just the lack of uh, making the most of those opportunities, I suppose, that's costed the Barkaroos uh, quite a few opportunities. They've certainly got the intensity and the momentum. They just haven't got the uh, accuracy in front of goals to really get things moving forward in their favor. So a good spoil there from our man, uh Malakai Lions, of course, uh, Goldie's part of the Hills contingent to play next week in the Eastern Zone team yep. in the country championship. So, wish him all the best. High ball in from the Boundary Academy boy. Luke Roberts does the rock work. Taken there by Buckley, searching for a bit of space. Gets on the left, centres the oh. ball intelligently. Coming was Vergara, just couldn't quite hold it. Stack forms over the top there is uh, drill bit Roscoe Brooks. Puts his hand up, appealing for uh, holding the ball, but uh, no way. We've got the, the numbers there, Rob. Yeah, so seven inside 50s, five for handle. Yep. So ball up, dangerous territory here for the Barkaroos. Ball comes down. Looks like uh, Harley Montgomery, the Swan, was in there. He was held up in the tackle. So once again, we'll recommence play. Roberts doing battle. Fists the ball out wide in the open. Comes out to Vergara. Feeds out the back door to Hayden. I think it is. Gets a clever little kick. But to intercept, that's a good mark. Not paid well, to no, Thomas. Not paid. Obviously not 10. And the fresh man uh, held up. So uh, the uh, blonde locks flying in the air there. Goldie with a yeah, big leap. Looked like he was diving off the 10-metre platform. He was up that eye. Meanwhile, ball comes down. Held in once again. Scramble play in the pine tree side pocket. As uh, Handel working towards Alexandrina end here on the quarter wild. They lead 2-2, three behinds. And we're coming up to 19 minutes gone first term. Left half forward for the Magpies. Salt went up there. Here's a chance for Buckley. Oh, big hip and shoulder. I think that was by Brooks. And it's held up inside 50 for the Pies. So a couple of goals on the board for the Magpies. They lead 2-2, the Mount Barker, three points. Now, Barker have got the ball inside 50. Pistol just haven't uh, got the goal yet. Absolutely. Big Matty Johns get double hands it down. Taken away by Hand of a smothered attempt. Snap there. Sees the ball back in a pack situation. And once again, Cooper now Nijkamp. Cooper Nijkamp. He seems to recover from uh, friendly fire from uh, Luke Roberts. A while of course, ago. no Darcy Hurrigan today, Pistols. Yeah, Big Darcy. Oh, nicely oh. joined us as uh, the wind just blows through the dream maker here. It's all part of it. I'll tell you what... Uh, <laughs> You've got to be a man to front up the conditions and uh, unfortunately uh, missing Shane Collins this afternoon, Goldie. But, uh, anyway. He'll be sipping on some soup. He would be. That chicken soup, uh, Collo, good for you. Meanwhile, ball, scoreboard, uh, sorry, flank area. Locked in there, finally clearing hand. Ball comes out, Matt Barker. Henry Bruce gets back to G-Banger Grouch. In turn, gets the teammate there in the swan. Harley Montgomery. Montgomery. Got it he away. Goes back to Grouch, who at ground level dived on it courageously. But it's locked in under there. So, Matt Barker gradually moving it forward. And as you said, you can't knock their endeavour here. They just haven't been able to make a couple of, uh, the use of a couple of opportunities. Three points, play hard off two two as i suggest coming up the 20 minute mark here first term quarter to wild curry cup final bouncing ball reading offer puts his nose over the ball just can't control it williams. coming in there was williams flicks out a handball to yench grabs it one hand and turn feeds it out to hayden this is a good play by the pies he'll steady and go side 50 looking for the tall timber over the top was roberts got his hands to it ball comes to the ground desperate defense thomas working hard in defense gets a quick kick away sets alpha oh, oh good taken running. by hayden his kick was smothered chapman goes in hard thomas back in there and umpire coming in, so uh, yeah, pr pretty competitive footy out there at the moment, Goldie. It is, inside 50 here for the Pies. Who's in the ruck? Oh, Sam Hayden. Johns. Up against Johns. Ball comes out to the Swan Montgomery. Oh, pinched. Williams. Trying to get a handball out to a teammate. Cleared out towards the boundary line by Malarkey Lions. Staples tried to collect it, it's gone out of bounds. Right half forward area for the Magpies. So. Rob. Yeah, eight inside 50. Now still six to Handorf. So Daniel Roberts gets a tap down take by Hamby. Don't argue as he just <laughs> shucked off uh, Grouch there. Parker Byers got it to his. Thomas working hard. Defence he's gang tackled oh, in by tackle. a couple of pies taking the ground. One of them being Cooper Nightcamp. So uh, pretty even in the rough taps too, boys. Ten apiece. So it's been rough taps. Here we go again. Big Johnsy goes unopposed for Mount Barker towards the boundary line. Hankin spins his way out of trouble, gives it to uh, a teammate who's ridden in the ground. Could have been Yench, I think. Tackle. It's been ferocious, boys, from both sides. In fact, it was Staples. My apologies there to the silky one. So, ball up. Johns, Daniel Roberts. Roberts just pushes him off, then palms the ball down. Close to the boundary line, and there was Stokes. Hughes is in there as well. 
it also looked like leak for Hardorf. So right in front of the members' uh, balcony here at the Parkeroo's home ground. And uh, perhaps there's a few play people up there, uh, Goldie might have played in the first time these two sides played. Well, potentially. <laughs> uh, Salt with the handball out. Oh, oh dumped to the ground. Tackle. That was a good tackle by Brooks. Yeah, on uh, Troy Parker Bowers. Troy Parker Bowers, yeah. Swing Solid tackle, tackle by the, the drill bit, the co captain. It's been a good period here for the Roos Pistols, just holding the ball up inside 50 for Handel. Absolutely. So, big Giles back in ruck, gets it down. Quick kick away by uh, Hughes. Barker. Hughes up oh, here. That's uh, Woodhouse, I think. Put the, big, put the Dukes up. Took it. a good contested mark. Surveys what's on offer. Then decides to go short up the line of Thorns. Wiedenhofer. So, Wiedenhofer, once again, what's on offer? He goes out wide. And he's found the teammate there and Alex Oddy. Oddy. He goes with a short pass and finds Thomas. Goes inside 50, but that's chopped um. out by Staples. Poor movement there from the Roos. Staples, half-back flank area. He decides to come across the Dreammaker side of the ground. He's got a loose man out here. Wide, and it's Joel Leak. Takes a mark in turn, moves it shortly up the line and finds Sammy Hayden. Very impressed in his uh, return season for yep, Handel from down at Sturt. He chips it to the 200 gamer in uh, the GOAT. Scott Stallion Perling, who goes across the line here. So Handel just using the ball effectively. Gets to a teammate there who oh, was uh, Eckerman, I think it was, but he's turned over to kick as it's uh, taken there by Oddie again. Oh, good handball. He's a running Thomas on his left boot, non preferred. Dangerous position of Perling coming through. Here's a chance to leak. Back to Perling, back to Hayden. So for the Magpies, he works the ball out of defence, out towards Luke Roberts, tied on the boundary line. Coming in was Nick Hankin, almost jacked there by Malarkey. Lines out towards the boundary line. The umpire says that's holding the ball. So, Malarkey lines. One of our favourites. Uh, he's had a pretty good season for the Roos. Every time we've seen him, he's been pretty consistent in his defensive role. So right in front of the uh, canteen area, in front of the uh, new women's change room centre, or unisex centre, gets it across back over here to a teammate in James Hughes. Gets it to boot up here to Thomas, who's been pretty active. The skipper feigned a handball then, decides to uh, go with the foot. Goes out wide towards the wing area in front of the dream maker. Just up the line, that's a perfect kick to touch as it bounced... Uh, so about uh, a foot inside the boundary line. So the academy boy will do the uh, throw in here just in front of Dallas, the, uh, the hard-working dart fish cameraman. And of course, all the highlights you can see on hillsfooty.com and trust you enjoying our live stream on HFL Facebook. Absolutely, and it wasn't good on that occasion. Intercepted there by Payne, and uh, resulting uh, now Barker moved the ball forward. He's been very good, Goldie. Kiss of death stuff there. Yeah. And uh, Tommy Wortley, Rob Shield, with a chance to put the Barker his first, first goal, goal on the, on the board. He'd be, what, 15 metres out in a slight angle? Yeah, tricky breeze. Breeze, be breeze behind him. Um, if I recall, he had a shot earlier in the piece. So Matt Barker, three points, trailing hard off 2 2. Quarter time looming here. Deliberate approach. They spread yeah. the breeze pretty well. That's a better finish by the Barkaroo. So Wortley <laughs> gets their first uh, first score on the board. 25 minutes gone in the first term. So it just keeps them in touch after a, uh, a pretty entertaining opening uh, quarter. 1-3 plays 2-2. Two, two. Parker Bowes in ruck. So back so in the centre. What do we got? We got ten inside fifties to Barker and still seven to Handorf. So um, Mount Barker have had plenty of opportunity. So back in the centre, Roberts versus Giles, taken out by Madsen, gets it forward, bouncing ball over the head of Buckley. Taken out by teammate oh, in Nightcamp. Oh, his high coming? kick as he's pushed. Will it come back enough? 
not quite. And three for a minor score. So Handoff just showing their ability there to move the ball quickly. As they took that ball out of the centre bounce. So looks like Lines will bring the ball back in for the Ruse towards the balcony side. Getting back there was Hayden. Also Montgomery for the Ruse. Hayden wins the contest. Goes to the ground under pressure from Montgomery. Coming to scissors. Nick Hanger gets a handball back here to Cooper Nycab. He's tapped again and clearing handball for the Ruse to Big Giles. Hands it back off to uh, Montgomery. But that'll be the last action of term one. So we have seen a pretty good entertaining opening term here, the Career Cup final for 2019, Division 1 A grade. Uh, competition leader Mount Barker, sorry, uh, Harndorf, 2-3 leading Mount Barker, 1-3. Goal kickers for Harndorf, Nick Ingram and Luke Roberts, and then Worfley just getting late in the uh, term, getting the first one on the board for the Barker Roos. So as we said, 1-3 to 2-3 here. On HFL Media, the call of the wild. Back here in HFL Media, hillsfooty.com, as we go out to Rob Sheward in the centre of the ground at quarter time. Okay. Um, both teams in battles, so both teams are in their Yeah, both teams are in the huddles, so um, in the uh, huddle for over here. Um, I may have a bit of trouble in your boys. Anyway, uh, yes, there's a handoff in the group. Pictures are talking. Arthur's out here talking, so um, yeah, it seems to we might actually come back to Rob a bit later on, just having a few tech problems out there, Goldie. Yep. But uh, entertaining term, must admit, and uh, well, wind just picking up a little bit here, but um, as you said, the endeavour of the Barkaroos was pretty good. It was, and an uh, impor important last late goal there uh, for them to uh, work Lee. so uh, giving themselves a real sniff here with Simon in, his char in charge as coach. And as we mentioned, Curry Cup final, and... Uh, Handoff going for their fifth successive win, which is a pretty good record. Uh, in 35 years of the Career Cup, Handoff have won 10 wins already, and Mount Barker was six. So these two clubs have won the lion's share in the uh, the history of the competition. And uh, both sides have actually won four apiece in, uh, previously, so they jointly hold the record of most wins. But as I said, Handorf currently going uh, gunning for a fifth successive victory in the, uh, the mid-season trophy conducted here in the Hills Football League. How's my microphone here? Is that all right? That is a lot better, Goldie. You yeah. seem to be uh, dropping out there previously. Uh, towards my the end battery of the was low. The batteries. And, uh, yes, so trust you're enjoying the coverage here on HFL Media. And, of course, Mortgage Choice, Adelaide Star Buses, Jarrett Nissen, uh, Chris Shaw Accounting and Ned Whiskey. And, of course, we can also, uh, on uh, Kickin' FM, Goldie, of course, we can uh, listen to it there. So trust you're enjoying our call of uh, Hills Footy. As we said, uh, two, three, one, three. I think we're on YouTube today as well, Pistols. And YouTube, fantastic. Here you go, uh, watch live on uh, the hillsfooty.com page and you can either watch it on Facebook or also on YouTube. Okay, so team's just dispersing. Simon Noonan, of course, handling coaching duties this afternoon for Mount Barker, assistant coach as he is. And, of course, regular coach Scott Titterman away, sunning himself. And, of course, Maddie Golding, the uh, reigning premiership coach in charge of of Harndorf, so uh, both sides dispersing now. We'll just wait for Rob to come back, and we'll he's been talking back. for the last 10 minutes, but we haven't had him on. <laughs> sort of what we do, the collar. <laughs> uh, no, hope you're listening, Shane, and hopefully you're uh, feeling a lot better, because our man Shane Collins caught a bit of the uh, windy hill chill last weekend, but uh, conditions completely different here this afternoon. Goldie, of course, and the uh, I must say, a little bit overcast, but I don't think any rain on the horizon at this stage. So in the middle for Mount Barker, we've got Luke Giles in the ruck. 
Got Tommy Hughes in there. It looks like Chapman and Mark Thomas. Dylan Madsen, Sam Williams. Matty Yench in the middle pistols having a bit of a go. So we'll see what unfolds here as the umpire sets it up. Started a second term. Luke Giles, Daniel Roberts wins it down for hard. North bouncing ball. That man Yench's first get there. Got his hands to it as it's fumbled out wide. Stacks on the mill there from Sam Williams over the top of Hughes. So once again the umpire will board up. So here they come again. Giles. Matt Roberts as he gets the ball down. Yench in there. Taken by Thomas. Dispossessed also in the Vergara over the top. Did he infringe Thomas? No, said the umpire. Right on the cricket pitch area. So a pretty spirited opening. Rob? Rob Bay. Uh, your thoughts uh, just yeah, out Robert, there? Now we've got your back. Uh, what was happening there in the huddles, Rob? Yeah, uh, Matty Golding. I mean, they were both pretty measured. Matty uh, Golding was pretty happy um, just to keep keep working hard, lock, get their forwards to lock in. The, uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, we just got a stat there as the ball came <laughs> right off the boot, nearly into the uh, dream, yeah. mate. <laughs> so more of the same. So, um, yeah, they were just pretty measured in what they were talking about. So... Uh, yeah, looking forward to, to um, another uh, tough second quarter. So Dallas, the cameraman, nearly getting a stat there. So here's the throw in. Giles, Matty Roberts. Giles gets it down. Stokes uh, coughed it up. Tamed by Buckley. Quick little left footer towards the uh, cricket net pocket. Come here, Luke Roberts. Taps it back to a teammate in Parker Bowles. He goes to the ground. Umpire coming in and saying, I'll have it. So spirited start, as you expect, between these two traditional rivals the second term 2-3 Handorf leading Mount Barker 1-3 Ruck duel Luke Roberts doing against Giles gets the ball down once again under pressure there is ground level is Grouch ball feeds its way out well fed out by Montgomery to Thomas he's been busy this coke up puts it up Mark Cheney Cheney pulling in uh, Matt Roberts said his name on but the former Crow and Cheney takes the mark and plays on kicks the thumping ball inside 50 pistols up went Nye Campbell hits the deck and it's gone out of bounds in the Good's left forward by, pocket uh, lines once again Goldie yep. he's been good early so a boundary throwing inside 50 here for Handorf. Looks like Salt's going to... No, he's, well, he's going to do the ruck work there. Three, no, still about uh, three or four goals too, boys, by the way. Luke Roberts in the ruck against Giles. Roberts, Williams coming through. Is that Parker... Well, Nykamp got a clearing kick away. Weedenhofer. Weedenhofer. Got a few touches early in the qu uh, first quarter and it's gone out of bounds right forward pocket. So sun breaking back through the clouds here again. Brilliant day for footy here at Hanson Oval. So, as Goldie said, boundary contest resulting. Up they go, Giles double hands it down. Comes back to Giles, he tries to swat down the air. Grand level working hard was Barnett. Ball fed out here to Luke Roberts. He grabs it, tries to get in the left foot, decides to go over the right, has a ping, but it's wide. Umpire just moving a bit too much. And so through for a minor score, takes hand off to 2 4 to Mount Barker 1 3 here on the call of the wild. So, Lions with a kick in for Mount Barker. Doesn't really need to use that square, does he? No, they're not using the square today, And Colo. so he doesn't. Comes out of that square, kicks it towards the half back line. Luke Roberts and Sam Hayden were around the action for Handorf. Tom Hughes wheeled around, got it out. Stokes. Oh, Whoa. high tackle on Thomas against Luke Roberts. Had his head ripped off. So Tomo patrols past us in the commentary van. Good mark there for Mount Barker. By Wortley. Wortley. Goes with a little short pass. Oh, a bit lazy. Is it going to come off for Mount Barker? Back to Wortley. Goes back to Tom Hughes. He goes with a short pass. Bit of scrambly play early in this second quarter, and that's held up. So one goal, three Mount Barker. Handorf, two goals, four. Four minutes gone in the second quarter here. Ball up. Ball comes out to Bruce. Kick inside 50 into the forward pocket. Oh, floating across the top there. From Mount Barker has gone out of bounds though with Sam Hayden near the ball. So five minutes gone. Handoff two goals for Mount Barker. One goal three. So boundary throwing inside 50 here. For the ruse. Bruce, Henry Variety, over it. Comes out. Yench gets onto that trusty right foot, out towards Salt, flicks it on. Lines will come in here for the ruse. Coming in with Salt. He got it away, but it's cut off by Montgomery. He goes to Lines. He goes towards centre half forward. It's inside 50. Tommy Hugh, I mean, Billy Stokes will collect it. 
got around his uh, opponent. Handball over the top to Henry Bruce. Oh, good spoil there or smother. And that's gone out of bounds in the right forward pocket for Mount Barker. We'll go around the ground very, very shortly. Handoff two goals four. Mount Barker one goal three. Boundary throw in. Mount Barker had the ball inside 50 here for the last uh, period of time. Important that they uh, capitalise. Their solitary goal kicker was Wortley. Luke Joles handles over the top. It's cut out by Madsen. He goes to Yench. Gets onto that right boot once again. Salts the intended target once again. He'll go here. He'll have a bounce. Good pressure there. Oh, gets around the direct opponent. He'll go for goal. Lovely transition from Handorf. Matt Yench to Salt. Yeah. He's taken a bounce and kicked a lovely running goal there for Handorf, Rob. Yeah, great play, wasn't it? Um, young lad had the composure. Once he got the ball to, to stop, sidestep the Mount Barker player. And, um, yeah, good good kick out of defence from Yenchi as well to find the find the young fella. So, great piece of play. Mount Barker had the ball inside 50 uh, pistols for a little bit of time there but couldn't capitalise. And Handorf gone end-to-end, -end, Yench to Salt. And a lovely running goal. Absolutely. Benny Salt's eighth game for the season. I think he's just about kicked a goal in every game he's played this season. Young so he... fella out of 18s, is he? There or thereabouts, yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah, so I said a goal in every game, so you can't ask for more than that from one of the young, uh, emerging young guns, as Darcy Hurrigan spoke about pre-match. Uh, pre Ruck contest in the centre ground. Ball comes down, taken away by Williams. Long sweeping handball towards Cheney. Grabs it. Looks for support. Goes back. This is Yench. Williams. Under pressure there from Thomas, goes to ground. Handball. Finally, it's taken by Eckerman, who drives the ball forward. Bouncing ball is a chance. Will it sit for Robert? Showing pace there. Dry July is paying off for the big yeah. man. I oh, tell you what, that's the it. goal of the day, <laughs> I'd suggest. Uh, did you get that one, Dallas? <laughs> Lukey Roberts just turning it on, and a great play. And, uh, Williams involved. Got that Eckerman, and then uh, driving, and uh, wow, Luke that Roberts. Right yeah, the boundary. Great goal. So Doesn't take much pistols and Rob, does it? And the Handorf have uh, kicked in the gear here. Yeah, and that's what Matty Golding was saying at quarter time, to get the ball in long. So as I said, in the blink of the eye, Handorf, half lead by one straight kick at quarter time, and now opened a 18-point uh, lead, 4-4 four, four to 1, goal 3. And we've played uh, seven minutes in this uh, second term. Around the grounds, quarter time, Raiders 6-7, leading Macclesfield yet to score. Perhaps a bit of a breeze down here at Callington. Ironbank 6-6, six, six, leading uh, Kangarilla 2-3. And we'll endeavour to bring you up to date with all the happenings in the Hills Football League here this afternoon. Meanwhile, the ball comes out here to Jamie Grouch. G-Bunger arches the back for the Roos, drives him inside 50, looking for the reply. Getting under it is Cheney. Plenty of experience there. Takes the ball as uh, Andrew Iskowitz makes sure as he earns that mark. And looks like uh, the umpire is going to, uh, yeah, bring him back 50 metres for that uh, lava late challenge. So... Uh, Cheney, of course, uh, past Melbourne Adelaide player. Drives the ball inside 50, looking here for Salt, bouncing ball. Salt gathers it, handballs back here to Hayden. He's got time to steady, goes inside 50. Actually has a ping at the goal, you wouldn't know. That's actually gone through. Sam Hayden, a remarkable goal there, almost casual-like, setting it up, and it's gone through. And as Benny Goldson said, bang, in the spot of uh, just under three minutes, Handel have added three successive goals. So the Magpies certainly taking charge of this Career Cup challenge and top of the table uh, clash here at Howard Lane. They move to 5 4 34, Mount Barker, one goal, three. Simon Noonan there on Call of the Wild. Of course, uh, handling the uh, coaching role this afternoon for the Barkaroos and the Absence has got Tillman back in the centre. Up they go. Ball comes down here. Moving the ball forward as Bruce looks support as he flicks that in towards Payne. He goes to ground, pushed in the backs of the umpire. So Payne at the edge of the cricket pitch, relieving free kick for the Barkaroos. Drives it forward. Huge good spool there by Eckerman. Bouncing ball. First to get there is Hanby. Gives it on to the run of Eckerman. Here go the Magpies again. Parker piles out wide to Yitch. Feeds out a handball out here wide. To Vagara, I think it is. Roberts in the pocket. And Luke Roberts sliding and taking a very good mark. Difficult shot here for Big Lukey. I said he's already kicked two this afternoon. And has uh, kicked ten for the season. So Luke Roberts, part of the uh, trio of Roberts boys. Playing here in Handorf colours. So Luke Roberts, deliberate shot. Tight in the pocket. Wellington Road in. 
Sits on its way. I tell you what, the goal umpire likes it. Not much reaction from his teammates, or there is now as they get around Big Lukey. So Luke Roberts with two goals in this term. And give him a total of three for the game. And Harndorf moved further ahead as 10 minutes expired in the second term. And certainly stamping authority on this game now as they move to 6 4 40. Mount Barker still camped on their quarter time score of one goal three. So in the spate of 10 minutes, the Magpies have added four goals. Four goal one. And as I said, Barker is yet to get on the map here in the second term. So they need a reply or the game will slip away even further. Back in the set of Daniel Roberts. Johns comes down to Matt Thomas. Feeds out a handball. Intercepted here by Buckley. Kicks smothered well by Ross Brooks there. Bouncing ball picked out there by Billy Stokes. He's well tackled by the big man in Daniel Roberts. And the umpire will come in ball up wing area here at Mount Barker. Pleasant conditions. Roberts wins it down. Stokes fighting for the ball. Buckley. Buckley wins it. Somehow feeds the ball out. Big John's though, man's intercepted out here towards Hankin. Spins his way out of trouble, gets a short little toe poke up the hand. He goes high with a high kick towards half forward. Camped under its uh, lines. Yep. Takes a uh, courageous mark holding his ground. Feeds it out wide out here. Billy Finds Stokes. Billy Stokes. Feeds it on to uh, Wiedenhofer, who's uh, tackled well. Tackled there by Nycamp right in front of the dream maker here on the wing area at uh, Howard Lane. Hanson Oval. Good crowd in the house seeing this clash between the traditional rivals and trust you're enjoying it here on HFL Media. Boundary throwing just in front of us here. Roberts pushes out uh, his ruckman. Oh, Thomas, oh, that's holding the ball. Great tackle. Was keen to move it on, but he's wrapped up. Gang tackle, and it uh, looks like Nick Hankin will earn the free kick here. He's keen to move it in quickly. So the Magpies on the, on the surge here. Bit of a grubber kick. John <laughs> threw it out to Lyons. That was rugby style. Tom Hughes. <laughs> Henry Bruce flicks it onto lines. He goes along the line, and it's uh, marked there by William Bruce Pistols. Bruce gives it off the run of Billy Stokes. Awkward left foot, puts it forward, coming to meet it was Leek. Bouncing ball, he's got assistance from Staples. Gives it back to Leek on the, behind him. He couldn't actually not ready for it. Mopping up his Hayden, his high handball. Here's a stallion, 200 game man. Feeds the ball backwards to uh, Chaney. Chaney. Chaney, always there in the crisis. Gets the ball out wide, dispossessed there. I think it was Leek again. Here's a chance. Here comes back to Perling. Seeing what's on offer, he goes back once again to Cheney. So, old experience, hands getting him out of the trouble. Feeds the ball out and finds Hayden in space. So, yep. Magpie's good teamwork there as he's got to Parker Bowers looming down and finds him. So, Harndorf just uh, relieving the pressure there in good team system, Goldie. Troy Parker Bowers goes at a short pass to Daniel Roberts just in front of the pavilion area. I tell you what, Matty Johns will be heading to Sydney to play Wednesday night in the State of Origin with skills like that, Robbie Sherwood. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> good, very good. <laughs> well, here he pass. is again. With the spoil, Hayden collects it. Go oh, intercepted there by Hughes. Goes with a short pass to Bruce. He goes to Johns. That's a better handball. <laughs> to Stokes, to Bruce. Flicks it on. Thomas wrapped up in the tackle by Hankin. Kick forward by Mount Barker. 101. Giles up against Perling. Ball hits the deck of the crummers there. And Mount Barker, uh, Hundle should clear here through Cole Cheney and finds... Vergara, Vergara yep. in the distance. Waste no time, gets in the yench towards the centre of the ground. The silky one. Fainter handled and decides to go back and use that accurate boot of his, which he does. He comes across the grounds. He's got the drifting man in leak. Handball's inboard to Parker Bowles. He goes inside 50. Salts the target there, yep. but and the rival before the ball, the uh, line's a little bit exuberant and uh, was infringing him. So the free kick mm. paid here to Benny Salt. Already kicked the goal. Early the first goal this term, they've kicked three further ones, so they lead at six four to one at three. So Harndorf here with a chance to stretch their lead. So Salt, be you'll probably kick from just inside the 50 metre arc towards the Wellington Road end here. <coughs> nice conditions here for this round 12 class. Perfect conditions, traditional rivals. Probably have the sun right in our eyes soon. Be what 40 metres now, boys. Ah, uh, so you probably kick from inside just inside 50, I suggest. He's a goal kicker. Pistols, as we've said, he's kicked a goal in every single match he's played this year. He'll go from 45. Nice kick. The see why that's a beautiful approach and an even better finish there, Goldie. So they've racked on uh, five goals this quarter as we come up to 15-minute mark. And I tell you what, Mount Barker starting to tread water badly here, Robbie Sherwood. That's yes. Stats? And, uh, well, the inside 50s there, Indy. Uh, yeah. On the inside 50s, five uh, inside 50s for Mount Barker and no scores to the seven for Harndorf. And five goals. 
Great work down there on the boundary from the comprehensive from the 500 man. Indy, we got yep. ruck taps <laughs> 10 to 5 in Handorf's favour. So Daniel Roberts. So back in the centre, Daniel Roberts and Johns. Johns went up early. Oh, fed the oh, ball out there by Hughes. Taken by Thomas. Drives the Barker who's inside 50 with that man again, the milestone man in Perling. And who do he gets it to? His partner in crime, of course, Jeannie. Jeannie up the line finds Madsen. Systematic football now from the Magpies. Yep. Just trying to dissect the lines here. Yep. He'll handball it back to Cheney who's run on. Goes bang. Looking towards inside 50. Entry behind his lines. Holding on there. Blancing uh, ball. Getting back there. I think it's Whedon. Hoffa will be first to get there. Oh, coughs it up. Going to ground there. Handorf player. Once again, taken by lines. And I think he's pretty had, happy to see the sanctuary of the line there. And averts that attack just for the time being. So Handorf, just a quick transition, Goldie. You can see why they're... Uh, kicking in the gear now. Racked up something like 25 consecutive wins. Yeah, I think so, yeah. 16 minutes gone, Pistols, in the second term. Seven goals, four to Mount Barker, one goal, three. Boundaries, oh, where is the ball? Got the sun right in my eyes here. I'm going to have Ooh. to put the sunglasses on shortly. It's now, oh, it's near Mount Barker's interchange bench. That's something he wouldn't have said last week, that's for sure, no. Goldie. We'll have the goggles on last week, Goldie. <laughs> we were all in <laughs> here, flippers. keeping each other warm. <laughs> Beautiful conditions. Why wouldn't you be out enjoying the footy rather than being home on uh, next to the medicine cabinet, Rob? <laughs> Hope you're going well, Shane. We miss you. Yeah. It's, it's a ball up. That's a uh, sort of... Uh, it's on second bowl of soup. <laughs> pack situation, so we will have a ball up. As Goldie said, right in front of the Mount Barker coaching box. Rucks gather. Up high was Roberts, wins the ball down. Solid play, there's the ball. Uh, try to extract it from the group. Close to the boundary line, look for Parker Bowles. Got to kick backwards. Hot ball as it's finally fed out here. Williams. Williams yep. goes inside the corridor looking for Roberts oh. coming out and standing his ground, taking a good mark. That's 50. 50 Luke yep. Roberts says uh, Brooks, a little bit late. Brooksy coming over just to voice his disapproval. So a solid, uh, I think it might be uh, young fellow in Wiedenhofer perhaps. Or is it Bruce? Could be Wiedenhofer, I'd suggest. So met solidly there by the runaway train in Luke Roberts. So Wiedenhofer advances 50 metres, which gives him the opportunity to take the Barkaroos inside 50, which uh, they haven't done much this quarter. As I said, they haven't added to their quarter time score. They're 1-3 to 7-4. It's Wiedenhofer, short little kick up the Ooh, line. Oh, good Salt. interception there by Salt, bouncing ball. First get there is Lines. He's been busy this afternoon. Hooks it around. Oh, good mark. And good Stokes. mark under pressure there by Stokes. Coughed it up, though. That's oh, so Wortley. And then Cheney just drives out wide and finds Sam Williams, who's been pretty... Handy so far in this game. He'll go short towards Hanby. Off he goes. Bit of experience there. Turns and goes bang with a big barrel oh, that's a inside barrel. 50. That's Here's a, a Hail Mary. Salt. That's a Hail Mary. Salt. <laughs> Under pressure there from Bruce. Salt trying to keep the ball in front oh. of him. Cricket net pocket, unfortunately. But uh, Michael Hanby to bury the barrel. Bit of Hail Mary sort Almost of stuff. Almost a blighty there. Would have gone 80 metres, God. Yep. <laughs> well, <we're exaggerating. laughs> Just didn't quite sit for young Salt, did it? No, but ran uh, onto it. It's got the intended area now in the forward 50 for the Pies. So boundary throw in. Luke Roberts over the back. Coming through is Henry Bruce. Payne, I think it is. Payne. And Hayden takes the mark for the Magpies. Keen to move it on court quickly. Uh, oh, look at that. Sam Williams was called into it by a Mount Barker player. It's taken by Billy Stokes. So Billy Stokes, the cricket pitch area, puts it further afield. Taken there by the Swan and Harley Montgomery. Survey what's on offer. Goes short out here to Payne, who's ran on. Now he surveys what's on offer. Got Bruce, Henry Bruce, we're using no phones, a handball. Oh, and, oh the smother by Hayden. So he coughed up and then Matt Roberts feeds it out. Gee, bang of uh, Grouch is here. Finally comes back to Hayden on his left foot. Uh, dribbling kick along the ground, coming to meet him with Bruce, as in William. Kick out in the ball. Yep. Sorry, Whedon offer. Boom. The lookalike. And a lobs right on the canteen roof. So Matty Yench will go and get a pie as he retrieves the ball, no doubt. So, 19 minutes gone. Mount Barker yet to add to their quarter time score. They won three, still camped on that, nine points. Handorf have added five for the term. They sit on seven goal, four, 46. So a comfortable lead here to the Magpies as they seek a fifth successive Courier Cup victory. So Yench with the ball, finally retrieved. 
So, of course, past AFL star. What's a battle kick at the Cheney? Not on this occasion, as he goes long to side 50. Pat Grabbers, oh, big leap there. Giles, good mark. Waiting off him, but camped on the ground was the big ad Giles, Lukey Giles. And he takes a uh, solid defensive mark for the ruse. So, Giles on his left boot. All dangerous. It's in the middle of the ground now. Dylan Madsen applying the pressure. Around the ball was James Hughes. Tom Hughes, short pass. Out towards Payne. He goes further afield, Cheney. but it's chopped out by Kyle Cheney. So the Magpies across the half-back line just... Uh, I tell you, some of that delivery, if you're Mount Barker supporter, you'd just be shaking your head because it was really <laughs> indirect there as Mahandorf worked the ball out wide. It's built on the outside wing there. And looks like a legal... Uh, disp no, a free kick going no, back there to uh, yeah, Parker Bowles. Chicken yep. So, chicken wing, right? Oh, we could do with some of them after the game as he handballs it in. <laughs> Cheney running on. Oh, no, a good tackle applied there for the ruse. Still, Handorf pushed forward. Roberts, oh, pushed out blatantly oh, great there. Grab. Oh, lines. Perhaps the umpire not uh, giving Luke anything after that uh, incident earlier. So, ball comes out here to Big Giles. He goes short. Oh, oh kick is smothered there by Nye Camp. Pretty, pretty scrappy football yeah. at the moment, boys. Hughes. Managed to pick someone out. It's uh, Stokes. Shows a bit of candy. Then feeds the ball back out here. Tom. To Hughes. Hughes goes on 550. But oh, there's that man. Like he's playing the 200 gamer. Yeah. yeah. The stallion. Perling. Gets it out here to Hayden. Hayden. Who's running around like a lost dog. Unregistered. Salt. No one on no, it. Headed to Salt. Closing his ground. Oh, oh, look at that. That's class. That is class from Salt. He puts it back. He's kicked up. Uh, oh, he's ahead of Brooks. Bouncing ball. Come here's our man Lines. Feeds the ball out towards Barnett. Night camp. In the meantime, Lyons was infringed when he didn't yep. have possession, so breaks up an attack. He does break up the attack, finds Thomas. So Mark Thomas goes with a little short pass. Is that Wiedenhofer? Wiedenhofer, I'd suggest. I'm just picking up some long hair. So yeah. I've got the sun starting to get in the eyes now. Obviously, the barbers at Mount Barger going broke, I'd suggest Goldie. Lyons goes out towards Grouch with Salt on the mark. So Mount Barker, one goal kick, kick is so far, and that was Worthley in the first quarter. Handoff for no, kick no, seven. Oh, he's, goal, he? he's no. gone backwards <laughs> to lines on the last line, basically. And he goes towards Henry Bruce in the back pocket. So Wellington Road into the ground. It's caught by Goldie. Bruce nurses up no. the line looking for Wortley, who's uh, well down from his forward assignment normally. And out over the line. So 22 minutes just ticked over, and Coach Simon Noonan probably can't wait to get his boys in the room and just uh, reset them because... A very spirited, determined first quarter. They only trail by a goal, 1-3 three to 2-3. Three. They now trail 1-3 to 7-4. So it's all been the Magpies in the second term on HFL Media. Taken there by Grouch. He's no, you know, he's a guy who'll give you 100% as he's taken to ground. Good tackle there by Dylan Madsen. On a sun-drenched uh, sun ground at the moment. As the umpire come in, so Giles will do ruck against Luke Roberts. 22 minutes gone, 7-4, hard off, 1-3 Mount Barker. Working hard there was Montgomery gets out to Hughes. He's looking for a way to get the ball out. Comes to Payne and feeds it out there wide to Wiedenhofer. To Wortley. Goes back here to Montgomery. He'll get a kick away under pressure. Manages to find Giles. Oh. Pass on the teammate. Puts, but uh, working Tom it forward Hughes. was Hughes. Found a bit of space here. Bouncing ball first to get back there will be Leak. Of the Joel variety. Gets the ball back here. The Stallion. Perling. Goes to ground. Ball still live. Comes out to Thomas. Oh, that's good. Raises the eye quickly and gives Plays the Plays on here. Grouch. Can he get the quick kick? He can. He's got a couple on offer here. And Stokes. Finally Stokes. So first time, first real set shot at goal they'll have. Deliberate shot. And well worked up the line possession football. Thomas getting involved. Hughes. So the chance here for Stokes. Goldie has uh, kicked uh, four for the season. Well, that's what his Guernsey says. <laughs> Number four kicks for. So he'll be hoping he has to swap for number five for the second half. So they certainly need this goal. So Stokes, some 45 metres out, sits no, on his way. We're kick. right behind it. Nice has kick. it got the carry? Yes, it has. So Good work. Similar to the first term, you've got to wait to the dying moment. So the stands are for a goal from Mount Barker. It's raising their second is Stokes. They move on to two, three, trailing Handorf, 7-4 here on the call of the world. Yep, important goal there for Mount Barker through Billy Stokes. He's been pretty good. But they That's need nice. some more contributions, Rob, in the second half. Yeah, they just got to... Um, I mean, their attack 
balls fine. It's just it's turned into a bit of a scrappy game, hasn't it, fellas? But uh, Handorf have had the burst. Yeah. So During that period, Pistols, how many goals did they kick in, in the minutes? Uh, they kicked five in about Yeah, five minute minutes. mark, six minute mark, eight minute mark, ten minute mark, and fourteen minute yeah. mark. So, so pretty about five goals in ten minutes. Yep, so pretty consistent as they go and search as another. Daniel Roberts gets the ball down, taken away. That's better play by Mount Barker as taken forward by Montgomery. High kick. Ball comes to Grand News Cheney. Feeds the ball out wide. Taken there by Wortley. Got it back there to Henry Bruce. Goes long a to inside. Z. Oh, oh, big lead there from oh. A to Z. It's called by Goldie. Henry say. Bruce, uh, William Bruce in the pocket. Gets it to a teammate. He shrugged as he gets the ball away. Bouncing ball back there. And over the boundary line. But a huge yeah, lead there from A to Z. That'll be one of the highlights. Been a contender. If he, if he grabbed it. Just no, you don't have to grab him, mate, to, oh. be, a, to be a contender. contender. Oh, so rules up as we so go. it's a tempt, is it? <laughs> like Gary Ablett. <laughs> That's right, right on uh, Gary <laughs> Pert. Meanwhile, ball <laughs> held up there. Is Just need um, forwards to impart themselves here. Pistols, you reckon, Mount Barker? Uh, absolutely. As I said, they're not out of the contest, but when Handorf get the ball, they just, yeah, their transition is so slick. Here's a chance, a high kick out of the pack. Coming to me, it's Hayden, ducks the ball down Here the hand, go. he goes There's bang another. with another oh, big oh, barrel. That one's gone about 60 metres as well. Out south here, Salt, excited by this boy. Oh. Gets it back to Hankin, who overcooked the handball. Taken by Lines, have been good with him under pressure. Stokes. Bouncing ball out to Stokes to kick the last goal. He feeds the ball out here to the run of a teammate in Montgomery. He's got a man up the line, but decides to go inboard. Oh, could have been downfield. Yeah, ball bouncing ball while oh, racing through Staples. there. Hand off for Staples. Gets a high kick towards Cooper oh, Nykamp, who stretches over that. another youngster. He read read that That's well. a good mark. Gives him to the run of Hankin. Hankin takes his side. Fifth, there's a chance for Salt. Oh. Grabs the ball, just runs off lines and puts through the answer. And number six for the quarter for Handoff. It's just like uh, Pagan's Paddock with Salt at the moment. They're just unloading barrels towards him and he's running onto it. And that was a beautiful little pass over the top and he's run onto that. He's got some pace. So third goal of the quarter for Salt. You'd think you'd be looking at that and saying, well, we've got a man up this bloke. But uh, Salt, yeah, kicked the first one at five minutes and he's kicked consecutive goals. 14 minute mark and now at the 26 well, minute mark. Well, he's pushing up well. He's pushing back well. So absolutely. So as Darcy Hurrigan said, they're uh, blessed with rich talent down there at Arnold at the moment. And of course, Big Dars not playing. You take a, a 46 goal uh, forward out of your team. But they certainly do it on a bit at the bus yeah. afternoon as they lead 8 4 to 2 3 by Mount Barker here on HFL Media. And I reckon the siren is imminent. Yeah, 27 minutes gone, Boz. I, think. I was going to say, if Mount Barker got one before half, half time, there'd be a confidence booster, but Handorf got it. Clearing kick from Bruce goes forward. Ball hits the deck. Oh, socket by Staples. Collected by Montgomery. Not quite. Buckley, I think, was around the action. Here's Tom Hughes. Will he go with the handball? He does to Giles. Wheels around on the right boot. Inside 50, but cut out once again by Cheney. They've had plenty of forward entries, but Arndorf's defence holding yeah. up well. Goes out wide there. Ingram. Ingram. He'll Hayden. feed the ball to good. Hayden. Back to Ingram, the comb over Brushes man. Brushes off his opponent. Hayden's a handball to, e to Hankin, who cleverly tapped it onto Hamby. He goes bang with the hoof. Oh, he I loves tell you it. What, as we expect, a long finish, and he certainly <laughs> has done that. Straight through the middle for Michael Hanby. Of course, plenty of SA and FL experience. And yeah, it might be a dry day, but it's raining goals here for the Magpie in the second term. That's their seventh, boys. Added to by Michael Hamby with a big, long finish. And started off by Shaney down that once again. So, uh, yeah, great piece of running play. So the, how many did they kick? Seven goals. Seven yeah. And goals. basically they've all come within a, an 11-minute period overall. Yeah. 14 inside 50s to 12 to Mount Barker. So, so hard off sitting on top of the ladder undefeated. Mount Barker in second spot, and is this just showing the gap between the competition leader and the uh, contenders? Mm. The rest of them, if they are contenders. Handorf, uh, 58, Mount Barker, 15. Back in the centre, Daniel Roberts gets down. Montgomery and Hayden do battle. Montgomery also in there is Buckley, having run in the uh, centre of the ground, so ball held in, so the umpire will come and ball up. Still in the cricket pitch area. Dying stages of term two. Daniel Roberts palms the ball forward. Then Ooh, follows it up. The big man shoots out a handball to Hayden, Hayden, who gets a kick away. Here's Luke Roberts. Oh, cut off there by Whedon. Off. He'll be first to get to the ball under pressure. Ingram wants this. Ingram, Ingram he brushes wants him this. off. Uh, Here's he a wants chance it. for the comb over. Oh. Gets it back here to Madsen. Put this Another one down. One. The bun man goes bang. Oh, oh would have been a sensational finish there. Just Great hungry, effort there. Yeah, hungry endeavour there by Ingram. But, yeah, half time. Two late goals to Handorf have really swung full momentum in their way at half time. It's Handorf, nine goals, four Mount Barker, two goals, three. I thought the Roos were just starting to build a bit of momentum there, Rob, but late goals to Handorf and they're 
43 yeah. points up now. Handoff kick five early, didn't they, boys? And um, looked like they were running away with it. Mount Barker then just clogged the game up and pegged one back himself. Yeah, they Handoff just kicked the last three goals of the quarter. Last I think two, was, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to stamp their authority on the game. So um, pretty impressive with, impressive with uh, young Benny Salt. Kick three. Uh, kick three. In so that quarter. Uh, yeah, uh, Perling down back. All the, Chaney. All the Chaney. Um, Yenchi's getting plenty of the ball. Uh, Williams has done heaps. Uh, and uh, Sammy Hayden, he's a, he's a jet. So, um, yeah, winning all over the ground, unfortunately. I tell you, they're all contributing. I was just going to say, uh, Sammy Williams, he's been pretty busy. And Nick Hankin in one yep. of his uh, rear appearances this season, yep. he's showing some pretty good... Good tackling pressure. Yep, and then Leek and... Uh, Looks like Graham Sinclair's coming over. Leek and Parker Bowes, they just do what they need to do. Absolutely, so... So they're a good team, aren't they, boys? They are a very good team indeed. They take a pretty good side to beat them. Might have a chat to Skinny. And at the moment, um, there's the sun beaming down on here. Um, I think Skin wants to... Rob, to uh, get hold of uh, one of the great men of football, is no, uh, making his Sinclair. way over. I'm going to have something Mr. to eat. Sinclair. Always great to have a, uh, a chat to him. We are really blessed with um, his presence this afternoon. <laughs> you on the inside fifties and that quickly before Graham comes? Quickly, yeah, Indy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we're uh, inside fifties. We've got uh, 22 to Mount Barker and Handorf have got uh, 27. Uh, 16 in the. Uh, Taps to Handorf, 10 to Mount Barker, and we've got uh, seven centre clearances to Mount Barker and uh, two to Handorf. So now it's, it's a rarity that we have. Um, <laughs> it's a rarity that we uh, have the opportunity to have two of the past greats of the Kensington Gardens Football Club <laughs> together. So <laughs> Graham Sinclair has joined his former teammate uh, Rob Sheward. Uh, Graham, as always, great to have you aboard here and call the wall. Now, can you just tell us, uh, did Rob ever kick? What was he like at training? Was he one to Did he hog the mirror? Uh, he was always on time. It didn't really do much when he got there, but he was always on time. <laughs> you got to look the part, pistols, you know. Had the socks pulled up. Eh? <laughs> and the mouth guard in the shorts. Now, you've probably seen this uh, every week, because uh, Avid Handorf man, of course, uh, the award-winning manager in the days gone by. Um, they just have this ability, we're saying at quarter time, a, a goal to difference, as you've probably seen a lot of games this year. They take the early heat from the opposition, they just produce passages, as we've seen that quarter, seven goals and just virtually kill off a game, don't they? Well, in a game like this, Mount Barker had the breeze in the first quarter, which I think is a bit of an influence on the game, but they do. Uh, yeah, they have, we're already talking about being slow starters. I'm not quite sure what the reason is for that, to be honest, but... Um, I think some of the lesser players, the players that we don't recognise as often, you know, Hayden and guys like that have really got a lot of the ball and that's probably the thing that makes them a little bit hard to sort of match up on. We're talking, uh, we're lucky pre-match to have the great goal kicker himself who's uh, obviously missing today with a bit of sore spots and of course with an extended break next week he'll be back uh, better than ever when play resumes uh, after the state championship. But they've certainly covered that uh, pretty well. We're very impressed with young Salt. Can you tell us a bit about him, Graham? Well, he's a local lad, very good cricketer, actually. He spent last year over in the UK playing uh, county well, for one of the minor counties in cricket. So he had 12 months off of footy, but really missed it and wanted to come back and uh, have another go. Sam Williams is another good cricketer who's done the same thing a couple of years ago. And uh, Michael Shanahan's over there at the moment doing it. So there's a lot of cricketers come footballers uh, having a bit of a stint. But, but the Soldi's a local boy come up through the uh, the uh, junior level. Probably actually a better cricketer than football, to be honest, but uh, but loves his footy. Well, i tell you what, kicking three goals in a, a quarter, is, as one of our regulars would tell you, it's going to be pretty good to kick three goals in a game of footy. So doing it in one quarter, I think that just pales uh, poor old Colo's uh, performance, Rob. <laughs> I don't know if Colo ever did that. He'll, but, he'll let us know next week anyway. But the old the, the old firm was we're talking about uh, in the background there, the uh, Cheney, the Yench just doing it. And, of course, the Stallion playing a great, or the Goat, as he's called now, I believe, uh, down there, Darcy told us. Uh, well, game number 200, as you're yeah. probably aware, with, uh, Pearl, with Pearls. So, uh, um, obviously, the, the, the boys are lifting a little bit for that. Yep. But uh, Cheney and, uh, and Yench's experience is, is phenomenal. Here, right across the other side of the oval, you can you can hear Cheney really talking clearly to the the Joel Leeks and the Ashley Eckermans, the younger 
members of the back line and, you know, teaching them where to go, where to run, you know, how to hold back and all those sort of things. And, well, you know, when he isn't playing in a couple of years' time, I dare say these guys are going to take a wealth of experience away from them. Excellent. Thanks for joining us, Graham, as no always. And uh, you're heading off for greener pastures, I believe, uh, second half of the season for a while. Heading off overseas. I'm lucky enough to be heading over to the US and Canada. Ah, oh, very nice. So just going over to see Donald and just sort out a few problems. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Even if we don't have World War Three while on the way, that'd be good. Excellent. Okay, Graham, thank you very much for joining us. Right, Graham, thanks, and we have all the uh, important people uh, joining yeah, us. Uh, and now we have most first. important, and must I say, not only the president of the Hills Football League, but also. State Country Selector, Malcolm Williams has joined us. Uh, welcome, Mr. Press. Hello, Jeffrey. How are you going? Very good. Lovely, uh, lovely to have you on board, Malcolm. Thank you. Now, of course, uh, State Country Championships next week. And could you just tell us about the Hills Football League's involvement in such an important occasion? Yeah, we've got uh, <laughs> we've got ten boys uh, in, mostly the young fellows. Don't ask me to list them, but uh, out of this game Rain here, um, Malachi Lyons from Mount Barker's in. Uh, Ash Eckerman, Joel Leake, and um, uh, Parker Bores is, is is in. Um, we've also anyone else, anyone else Malcolm? Anyone else you can think of, Malcolm? Off the top Eli, of your head. Off the top Eli of your head. Horrex, Kurt Waterman, and Nick Yentz from Nan. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. You know they're good young lads. Tommy Mayo from Onkers. Yep. Um, coached by uh, Dennis uh, Ilgerson. Ilgerson from uh, Mackey. Yep. So, um, and I believe uh, Glenn Thompson is going to be the manager. Yes, Glenn is, has been the, the manager of, for the Eastern Zone team yep. for some time. So, yeah, we've got uh, eight or nine boys uh, heading up next week and it'll be good experience for them because uh, it is a good standard of footy. Yeah, you're right. Now, it's been a while since Hills have been involved in actually any success. So, uh, so I was doing an article for the Courier, which will be appearing this week. Uh, the Central Zone, I think, in 2013, when Hills were part of that. Yes, I think uh, Henry yeah. Johnson and actually Glenn Dundevick were the yeah. only two representatives from the Hills. And as you said, since then we've been in the Eastern Zone and uh, success has we're not come our way. No, well, we're teamed with Riverland and the Mallee because the tyranny of distance is very, makes it very difficult to do any trainings or anything like that. So um, we're certainly lobbying uh, the powers to be to try and be partnered with the River Murray Football League. So when we play with the River Murray Football League on uh, June long weekend, it's easy just to pick a team out of that and, and go from there. But at the moment, it uh, yeah, it's very difficult. Next weekend, the boys are going to get up there and they won't know the Riverland boys and the Mallee boys. and So it's very hard to gel and be a competitive unit. But they're enthusiastic young fellows and I'm sure they'll uh, uh, gain a lot of experience from uh, the experience of being there. The country championships, and I know because of your... You know, involvement obviously as a state selector. Is there no doubt the powers that be have actually pulled this ideas and uh, discussions about how to perhaps upgrade it and make it more popular, for want of a better word, I suppose. Because let's face it, they ask every league to have a buy, so the best showcase the best South Australian country footballs, but we all know they're, they're not going to be in Port Perry next Saturday, Malcolm. Um, no. Um the ideals of the uh, state country champs are good, getting all the best players there, but unfortunately um, that doesn't happen. You have to be up there on a Friday night. Uh, it's all day Saturday and all day Sunday. And and to ask married uh, uh, men with families to make a commitment for a whole weekend is very difficult. So it does sort of suit, suit itself to the, to the younger single black um, on the way up. So whether, you know, whether it should be an under-25 comp, um, is a point of discussion. So, Do we um, look at perhaps the Victorian situation where they actually play as a league? So you're actually seeded, yeah, and so yeah. you play, t and uh, over a three year period, you move up the rankings, obviously. So when you actually win, and one plays two, you can actually say we are the best country Victorian football league. I, I, and I, I just, uh, the, way, the reason I'm coming for it, Malcolm, is um, as you said, guys in the Hills League mixed in with Riverland and Mallee blokes probably they don't know uh, where if you put on that league jumper there seems to be a bit more pride representing it. I, I agree with you Jeff um, and I was over to Chunga earlier today talking to an ex-HFL president in, in Chris Sheehan mm. and he Came reminded in. me of uh, when he was present uh, the uh, Hills did in that format did win over two year period they did win mm. the comp Mm. Uh, they took mm. the Lovelock Shield team that they had and they went and played the state country champs over two years and 
and they won. So I reckon that's got a lot of merit, and, and that has been floated. There was actually game. allocated weekends or Saturdays off for that for that competition. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. no, I think everyone that's agreed a, with it. So yeah, it's a lot better. I think we get a bigger bigger buy-in because at the moment uh, it's difficult to get a buy-in of the mm. of all the good players. Uh, but um, it is what it is, and there'll be a. Uh, a meeting up at Perry, and I'm sure a lot of these ideas will be thrown around. And, I was going to say, with the state country championships, they usually schedule a meeting of the various association presidents. That's yep, taking part. That so takes the play league on a Saturday night. Yep. Uh, so um, a lot of these ideas will be thrown. You'll be getting that over early, wouldn't we? Oh, I hope so, mate. I'd hope so. <laughs> now it's country selector, Mal. Um, does that see you travelling to Perth a bit later? <laughs> Does it have mate. its little uh, benefits? No, it's a position I held last year. Each, each zone, the six zones, yep. each zone nominates a selector. Uh, you have a couple of meetings throughout the carnival, uh, and from that, uh, you pick a, pick a state side. Last year, the games were here, but uh, this year it is in Perth. Oh, you did right. I think as a selector, I should be going. I think it's actually going to be held as a curtain race for yeah. AFL game, if I'm uh, Yeah, correct. that's what I normally do, so... Uh, or when they say a curtain raiser, they're still about an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Between and I see we're jazzing up our country championships by having the uh, SNFL showdown up there at Port Yeah, Perry that's right. Week. The Magpies and the Crows Being will play. Being a Port it, man, uh, yeah. Mal, well, you'd be yeah. in the element up there. That's right. Yeah, and that's that gets to another topic too. Uh, why would we be playing a showdown on a Saturday afternoon? How many, well, actually, it's how funny. How many tens of thousands of dollars would be ripped out of country football this this Saturday? By people you were quite right. I've actually had two or three people either uh, going to the Crows and uh, today or going home for Crows come up parties. And, the same and, and thing. Yes, be, yeah, community so football Saturdays yeah, said time right. slot. Yeah. AFL just shows a real little about grassroots football, but in the end they just couldn't give a rat's. <laughs> I wrote to both the Power and the, and the Crows last year when they had a showdown on a Saturday afternoon. And they wrote back and said, "Well, the scheduling has nothing to do with them. Uh, it's not their preferred slot, but it uh, it just knocks country." And just quickly, obviously, we've just passed the halfway mark of the Hills Football League in both competitions. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I know Div 2 obviously looks like, uh, unfortunately, that might yeah. be set. But uh, Division 1, it's uh, Division one is a pretty is exciting it, competition. It is. And today, you've got first versus second, third versus fourth, uh, fifth versus sixth, and... Uh, uh, the seventh team's got a mm. buy, and the two and seventh well, the battle for the spoon as well. So e every game's so got excitement. That's right. Um, obviously, hand off for a standout, and, uh, and we'll take some beating. But other than that, uh, the games are very close. I wouldn't like to pick a winner out of Vonkers or Yorela or a Chunga Blackwood or Loby Nan. I think they could go either way. So and just uh, for an administration point of things, uh, everything running smoothly. You don't want to hand with anything, or oh, definitely always. I know our man Colo's not here this afternoon. He's usually. <laughs> a few uh, remedies of certain problems for Mate, you, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult. Uh, job obviously, the major, uh, just quickly. Obviously, the major pressing problem, which has been for, is, is the juniors, as yeah. far as you know. Yeah, we're, we're uh, we have a, a recruit and retain project underway, and uh, we're talking with all clubs, particularly Division Two, about how we uh, go forward from 2020 and beyond. And uh, yeah, we uh, there's some things we might adopt from other leagues, particularly in Division Two, where we have 15 aside games. Um, um, Flinders University have done a study on those and apparently they're very successful. Uh, I know there's some of the leagues, other leagues out in the country have 15 aside, particularly in juniors. So we'll look at that model. So hopefully there's a few more ju clubs have junior teams in Division 2 because you want a healthy, uh, even uh, Colts competition that keeps people playing. And you're happy with the way the women's comp's going? Oh, that's been fantastic, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's, uh, that's good. You know, you've got new teams and old teams mixed in together but overall I think uh, it's been outstanding success yeah um, yeah uh, interesting <coughs> the finals will be coming up soon and I know when we filmed it I think we had within half hour of it going up there was six or seven hundred views yeah. Yeah. so yeah, yeah they no, love their footy it's fantastic and, yeah. and, and uh, hopefully uh, in a couple of weeks time we'll we'll play uh, a grade women's game the under 16 women's grand final and the C grade grand final all on Sunday so, uh, well, yeah. Super Sunday, Malcolm. Super Sunday, mate. Might have yeah. to see if the Dream Maker can get well, there, Jeffrey. We'll follow that. <laughs> All right, All right Malcolm. Let you boys get thank you very much for joining us. No and worries. there's always a good job, and uh, we'll be thinking of you next week. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Joined there by the president. <laughs> Joined there by the president of Hills Football League, Malcolm Williams. So all in readiness now for the start of the second half here. Call with the Wild, Mount Barker, Handorf. Handorf with a pretty handy lead, 59 plays 15 after a pretty dominant second term, running on seven goals to one. So just all in readiness, sun beating down here. Perfect day for football. 
Umpire holds the ball off, so we're underway. Second half. What can the Barkaroos do to get back in this game? One down by Daniel Roberts. Bouncing ball. Harley Montgomery eludes him. Also in there's Hughes. Dylan Madsen. Daniel Roberts working hard as he tries to ball his way forward. The big man. But he was held up by Harley Montgomery, which is no mean feat by the Swan. So the umpire will come in and recommence play just on the edge of the cricket pitch. So once again they go. Matty Johns. Daniel Roberts. Roberts wins it down over the top. First to get to be Henry Bruce. Gets a quick kick back towards the forward line. Coming to meet it was Andrew Skovitz. Didn't see much of him in the first half, except for that spectacular yeah. marking attempt. Gets out to a teammate who's he's dispossessed. Ball held in a scrambly. Montgomery in there working hard. Finally comes out to Madsen. High left foot clearing kick out towards the scoreboard. Flank bouncing ball. Eludes Cooper Nykamp. In fact, goes out of bounds right in front of the scoreboard. And we've had 30 seconds elapsed in the second half. Handoff leading 9-5 to 2-3. Yeah, just need some forwards to impose themselves in this uh, third term out Barker. Seven goals down. So the ball's in between both interchange benches. Look, the umpire's smacking his head here. So it's going to the Pies. And Yench gets the handball. Kicks it towards half forward. Oh, great mark by Luke Roberts. Keen to move it on quickly. He goes to the high ball. Salt and... Pe oh, gee whiz. I thought he was going to take that one. Good hustling work. Sam Hayden talks about him at half time. Ball comes out here for the Ruse. Line... With the sweeping handball, it's gone straight down the throat of Vergara, who has a shot for goal, and it's marked on the last line by Brooks. He goes out towards, I think that's Stokes. Thomas was the intended target. Cheney cleverly fisted it to Hayden. Good use here, Cheney. Under pressure from Grouch, goes backwards to Leak. Squares to kick. Intended target, here's Nick Hankin. Could have been a high. Umpire said he ducks. Staples, meantime. Finds Cheney fend off on Thomas. Goes to Dylan Madsen Pistols. Yeah, Madsen. Madsen driving the ball inside 50, getting back to his Barnett. Scoops the ball, gets support there from a teammate. Comes back there to Big Johns. He's held up in a tackle by Sam Williams and taken the ground. Go around the ground on hillsfooty.com. Raiders 7-8, leading Macclesfield at 3-4. Ironbank 14-12, Kangarilla at 3-5. And compliments of our sick man at home, Shane Collins. Thank you very much. It's uh, sent in the carrier pigeon. Onkers 7-11, leading your raid to 1-4. Oh. So that, that'll certainly pick up uh, well, Shane's... Well, they'll go into Jeez. second, won't they? That'll certainly pick up Shane's uh, thoughts there. Oh, Perling. Taken there by Perling. Takes a big one to the ground. Hankin with a handball nowhere. Dished out there by William Bruce. Payne with a long handball. Taken again by Perling. Oh. He's been good. Weaves his way through traffic. The veteran Stallion, 200 games this afternoon. Puts it out towards Cheney. He's got two to beat. In French. Pushing about. Yes, in French there by uh, Mark Thomas, the fresh man. And Grouch, they stand with hands on hips saying, you've got to be kidding me, umpire. But uh, pretty blatant, I'd suggest. So the Paul McCrow, Hawthorne and Melbourne player with the free kick just down from the Dream Maker as his team leads 9-5 to 2-3 here on the call with a while. Cheney, short pass to Williams. Just uh, taking his time here. He's got the sun out on the wing there. Rob, lovely conditions uh, here. Br uh, breeze has dropped right off, boys, so uh, not favouring any end, I don't think. So Sam Hayden, he'd be up there, pistols, I reckon. He'd be right up there, I reckon. Guys. Goes with a 50-metre kick inside 50s. Luke Roberts against three Mount Barker players. Off hands was Lyons. Buckley burrows his way through, but it's taken by Tommy Hughes. Oh, gee, he's under pressure from Yench. Handorf forcing the ball under pressure. Clearing kick from Hughes finds Leak. Is it? Has a shot for goal, and it's uh, marked on the last line. Is that Joel Leak? Haven't seen him lot. Ball fed out there by Mount Barker. Defensively, oh, good leap there. And a mark taken. No, Jacob it wasn't. Yeah. Play on, it was Montgomery. Ball comes back oh. in there. Oh. So good stretching, falling. Mark, I think it's the big man, isn't it? Or is it Nykamp? Nykamp. Backing Nike. back into the imaginary yeah, man. Yeah, so Cooper <laughs> Nykamp once again showing that amazing... Athletic ability, he has the ball almost past him and just stretched up the Dukes and took a good tumbling mark. So Cooper Nykamp, yet to get on the board in a uh, goal fest this afternoon, but has kicked 11 for the season. Second uh, got highest goal kicker at the moment behind the sideline, Darcy Hurrigan, who of course joined its uh, pre-match here on the quarter wild. So Nykamp, probably kicked from 45 to 50 metres out, did yep. a bit of approach. Alexander Dreen, nice Drina and it's a nice looking drop punt, but it's just faded at the last moment. So through for the first score of the second half. It's a minor one to the Magpies, but increases their lead. So they go to 9 6 60. Matt Barker 2 3 15. So Magpies well in control of this Curry Cup final as the ball comes out here to Wortley. 
in the sleeves in the old scoreboard pocket. He clicks to go back across goal and oh, back to line. So that's uh, grains a lot of ground, doesn't it? And <laughs> lines in the imaginary. On the last line? Yeah, he's in the, uh, he's in the Collins Square, as we'd like to call it. Square's not there, and neither's shown today. So the ball comes out wide. And out there taken by Henry de Bruce. So Henry Bruce, de Bruce quickly yeah. goes into his co-captain and Thomas, the fresh man, arches the back as he goes long. He's got a loose man out here in Montgomery, picks him out nicely. This is better play. Gives it out here to the run of Wiedenhofer. I think oh, curls the ball back one. towards his other uh, lookalike. And William Bruce keeps the ball in front of him. Perling's wearing him pretty closely and in the end out over the boundary line. So uh, one of the best transitions of the day uh, by the Barkers yeah, as they took the ball from the last line right up to the forward pocket area. Yep, got the ball inside 50 here, Pistols. So we've got a boundary throw in, well, 40 metres out. And quickly, boys, Essendon 76, Sydney 66, full time. What's going on there? Anyway, ball's a uh, free oh, kick, is it? Throw. throw to the ruse. That was a bit stiff. Someone's won and, a game of football. Uh, just quickly, too, boys. Richmond 123 up on the Gold Coast. Uh, Suns are 44, and that's a three-quarter time. So a shellacking. Actually, I was listening. Uh, Triple M, I think Rick Bricklands or someone actually picked the Suns. They said they were good for it today. Oh. That may affect the pies, mate. Uh, <coughs> just move along, uh, Rob. Four. Just nothing to see Who here. won last night? Uh, oh, I was watching Home and Away. Richmond, no. Essendon, no. Um, Meanwhile, Hawthorne. back the action here. <laughs> More sensible things. A to Z. It's a shot taken by Andrews. Convince, and ah, I tell you what, he's disappointing. Missed. That is a disappointing finish, Goldie. You know, well, you good call there. Forwards uh, stepping up. Chances are hard enough you know? to come by for the ruse, and when you blow them like that, so more in a score. So both sides have only kicked the behind in the second half. As Mount Barker uh, move along to two goal four, trailing Harndorf nine goal six here in the call of the wild. So all coming back. Matthew Yitch will bring the ball in from the Wellington end. Brown. So Yitch, the skipper, will he be hoisting the Courier Cup at the end of this game? I'd suggest yes. His long kick out. Pack sets himself over the oh, top with Elrod. Roberts. No, he Couple of magpies spoiled each other. Fed out the back by Hughes. Quick kick forward by Wiedenhofer. And here's Payne as the ball fortuitously falls in his lap. So Dale Payne with the opportunity here to kick a much-needed goal for the Barkaroos. Understatement there. So Payne, 45 we'll go, After this, out. we'll go to Indy for some stats. So Payne sits on its way. I think the goal umpire has moved too far. In fact, yes, minor score. So at least Mount Barker leading the scoring in this quarter. Well, They're two behind. Hard in, off Indy, we've got some stats down there. Eight the minutes gone. Down to the 500 yeah, the inside man. Inside 50s, uh, five to Harndorf, two to Mount Barker. So Harndorf have done a pretty good job at boomeranging it back in uh, as it gets out. Uh, I like not it. Not in the last minute or two, but yeah, particularly early on, they've done a pretty good job at just boomeranging it back in. Boomeranging boys. Good boomerang work there. Just bringing it all to the table. Uh, the 500 man in Indy. Meanwhile, the ball with Williams, <laughs> true in half back position for the back boys. Drives at the wing area. Hell Roberts right. territory. Luke Roberts. Tell you what, he's been good. Fence. Yeah, well done, Luke. He could be in the votes. Goes short across here to Madsen. Are you picking the votes today, Jeffrey? Yeah, well, yes. I could well do as Yetch runs through. Goes long. Hanby's down towards there. Towards Hanby. Dives in front of his tuck. Was he held? No, yeah, he yes, on. he was, said the umpire. So... Hanby, who we saw kick that magnificent long barrel. Just this rotating the forwards, Pistols. This one will be uh, closer for him to kick, as he'll kick from only about 35. That's might struggle to get back in, boys. Eh? He could well if the big man's listening. Uh, might have to come back through to Magoo's dust. I don't think that'll be the case. So Michael Hanby. Chance here he has kicked five for the season so far, as I said, including one in the last quarter. So Hanby, plenty of league experience in SNFL ranks. In fact, coach North Adelaide as well for a while. That's a lovely looking kick, but he'll have to go down to Colo's uh, Academy during the week because he's just pulled it a little bit wide. So they're all tied up at two points apiece. But in the overall score line, Harndorf leading 9-7 to 2-5 here on the call to Old HFL Media. Purling from position against A to Z. Oh, flicked on cleverly there to Grouch. Can he collect it? Oh, he oh, does well against done. Staples. Can he have a bounce here? They're under pressure now, the Magpies. On the counter-attack, uh, yeah. Ali Montgomery. Well, they've got, really got to kick this. Got in behind the pack there. So, Dallas, the cameraman, I suggest, be right behind the swan here. So, will it be a swan or will it be a lame duck, Rob? And, uh, she, uh, they certainly need the, this. Uh, Harley's high up in the Jarrett Nissan Player of the Year Award. So, Harley so, Montgomery. Of course, Torrens Valley, Chunga, Glenelg. 
Sturt, have Boots Will Travel, Harley. Oh, gee Ted's whiz. just drifted away, unfortunately, so they just can't buy a goal at the moment. Mount Barker, as they move on to 2-7, trailing hand of 9-6. Five points in a row now. You could be uh, correct there. So, now, Cheney. Cheney, shading his eyes against the sun, something we wouldn't have seen last week. Big kick out there. Robert stretches as in the loop variety, close to the boundary line. Ball out over the boundary line. Just going around the grounds once again for Mortgage Choice Adelaide Star Buses. Jarrett Nissen, Chris Shaw Accounting and Ed Whiskey and Strepsils for Shane Collins. 7-8, the Raiders lead Macclesfield 3-4. Ironbank 14-12, Kangarillas 3-5 and Shane's mob are up and about, not like him. They lead 7-11 to 1-4. Kick into the middle of the ground. Collected by Grouch. Uh, really go. got to make the most of this. Mount Barker kick inside 50. Cheney. Too Jeez, easy. He's got leather poison on today, hasn't he? Too easy to read that one. He's good. So Cheney. Yeah. He's looking for options. He's got Leak in the back pocket here. He goes for a bit of a stroll. He'll kick it out to Pistols and Rob. Uh, it's taken by Hay. Oh! oh my man Hay. <laughs> okay. He's made him good. earn that one. So he's He's been very good. This bloke's been pretty handy too. Williams, as he goes back towards Leek, someone else has been in. Oh, oh he runs he's into got, trouble here. Hayden, and uh, yeah, to... good stronger tackle uh, applied by Rossi Brooks. I'm sure he's going to run up forward. Goldie, the, uh, oh, the drill bit. The coach sure uh, has Leek had a bit of oh, trouble there. I think he got a dead leg. Joel Leek and uh, certainly uh, Dr. Not, Goldie. I'm no, not saying anything. He won't touch that one. No, I've learned. So, we got in trouble last so time. So, chance yeah, here can't. for Ross Brooks, I'd suggest a, a rare career goal. He's, well, he's holding his knee, so I reckon it might be his. He's favouring his chances here, Ross Brooks, the drill bit man. Goes long, puts it towards the top of the square. Is it going to drift through just the other side of the post? I think uh, it, it, it. I reckon he's got a dead leg in his knee. Yeah, but. Oh, well, you say it, Rob. I'm not saying anything. No, nah, he'll be back. <laughs> Good consultation there. Dead leg in your knee. Yeah, dead knee. A dead leg. A dead knee. So Cheney brings the ball back, goes back to Williams. And just a cheerio to Ryan Anderson. Hope he's all right. Yep. So Williams with the ball. <laughs> Nearly sent half back position for the Magpies. Oh, no. Will come the broadcast side for the Dreammaker. Sets up Hayden's lurking. So is Roberts. So is Perling. Got his hands to it. The Stallion. Ball taken by Hayden. Feeds no. it out to Buckley. In turn gives it to Luke Roberts. In turn gives it on to the run here of the comb over man. Nick Ingram. Gets in front of the balcony position, has time to brush up his skills, goes oh, inside lovely. and look at that, the uh, salt, salt and pepper. Champagne football to Calm over and the salt and pepper combining there. Yep. yep. The footy. Yep. After Mount Barker have had uh, ten minutes, ten minutes couldn't get a goal. And now salt from forty meters basically directly in front. Just keep your eye on the young fella leak over there. I tell you if uh icing on the cake, Goldie, is this a case of sold on the pies or on the on the chips <laughs> on the chips so benny salt going for goal number four believe it or not i tell you yeah. what that's just uh, fading away as uh, dallas the cameraman was right behind him and unfortunately the young bloke i think that's his first miss for the afternoon but it said he's already kicked three so he's uh he's done his uh, more than his share with the uh, scoring load as it's a straight seven point seven goal game here boys two seven Mount Barker, Hardoff, 9 7, 61 plays 19 here on the Call of the Wild on HFL Media. Trust you enjoying our coverage on uh, hillsfooty.com and of course Hills uh, HFL Media Facebook and of course Kicking FM. Kicking goes straight to Eckerman. Leak looks like he's just getting a bit of a look at by the both the trainers. Kicking inside 50, Luke Roberts. Off hands, Madsen got a toe poke away. Huh. What was that? Free holding the ball. Yeah, what did he pay holding the ball, Goldie? Yep. So both the trainers just uh, on hands and knees looking at Leak at ground level. Fisted in the old scoreboard pocket. First to get there was Nicky Ingram, but the ball beats him over the boundary line. So resultant throw in, as I said, will take place in front of the old imaginary scoreboard back in the day. So throw in, big John's lumbers in, ruck work taken by Salt. He follows it up. This man can do anything. Close to the boundary line, a bit oh. of shimmy magic, but uh, slips over in probably a little bit slippery conditions with the rain that we've had there. And, uh, Rob? Have we had an update from Nan Boys, the Nan Lobie game? No, we're trying to say it. We, uh, That'd out would be on their Facebook page, wouldn't it? Nan's yeah, Facebook so page? We did send out uh, requests, but I think the Pigeons didn't make it past Howard Vineyard. Meanwhile, ball picked up there. Driven in forward. Oh, good Actually, interception Rob by Wortley. Goes out wide here, bouncing ball. First to get there, showing plenty of paces. Maddie Roberts can't control it under pressure. Usually they do live scores. So I tell you what, I'll see if I'll just log into the vault. Hang on. From Alex Oddie. 
So throw in right in front of the scoreboard here at the Hans Noble Mount Barker and a bit of a sad tale for the locals at the moment. They trail 2-7, Harndorf Magpies 9-7, the clash of the traditional rivals for the Courier Cup. Daniel Roberts one hand it down, taken by Vergara, gets a clearing handball. Once again, Roberts in the action, he gets a high left footer. Back there towards Madsen, I controls the ball nicely, then wheels on the right, gives it a handy. He'll line up and go bang. No, this time he's looking for the lead. Puts it out towards Salt. Why wouldn't you? He's an excitement machine. Keeps the ball in front of him, gets support back there from Hayden. Oh, a bit of a mung kick there. Coughs it up. Comes back here to uh, Wortley. Under lots of pressure, it finally goes to Stokes. Feeds it out here, taken by Hanby for the pies. Chips it forward, but uh, Jamie Grouch restores some sanity for the Barkaroos as he takes go. a mark. Clears it up high. And finds a teammate there in Hughes. Flicks it out wide to the run of Wiedenhofer. This better work by the Barkaroos. So they go forward through Payne, I think it is, towards the top of the square. Getting back there is the Stallion, the 200 game man. Scotty Perling takes a mark right on the last line. I'll give you the live defense. scores. Uh, Lobethal, six goals, nine. Mount, uh, Nanbrem United, four goals, nine. That's uh, live. That's on. That half time? Now that's, uh, I guess, midway during the third term, similar to here. So two goal game. Battle there for the wooden spoon is the kick out. It's actually uh, Perling's kick was actually taken by Montgomery. So the chance here for the Swan. We actually saw a uh, virtually a similar position have a shot earlier in the quarter, Goldie. So Dallas, the dartfish specialist with the camera, is right over his shoulder. So this will tell the story. Will it be on uh, Hills Football League highlights during the week? Montgomery. Steady approach. No, oh, I don't again. think I don't think he will. At least he's consistent with his shooting. And I tell you what, Mount Barker have now kicked five consecutive points for this term boys they won uh two three and they're two eight as Harndorf go marching off in the sunset nine seven kick out comes here to Cheney geez he's been good at afternoon he be, could well be in the votes gives it off the run a leak goes further a field looking for big Daniel Roberts puts up the Duke ball comes down taken away by Hank uh, and I quick handball. slick handball but uh coughed up there comes back here the big Daniel he just shrugs off a man said leave me alone gives it back to Matty Roberts gives it back to the stallion Perling Chips it up to Sam Hayden, who marks on the wing. Handballs, oh, Hank, and it went too high for him, but he regrips. Oh, tried a little bit of funny magic. Comes to grief. Picked up by Hamby. The big frame just wheels his way forward. Puts it down forward. And, oh, that's a good, good tumbling mark, mark there. Yep. Taken by Nycamp, I think it is. So, uh, just their body uh, strength, as Rob Shear would remark, the strength we saw the classic example there, Big Daniel Roberts and Hamby just yeah. using yeah, their just brute too strength. Big and strong, aren't they, pistols? And here's a chance for Cooper Nycamp to kick his, uh, still yet to get on the scorers this afternoon, although he's the second highest scorer for the season, with 11 for the Magpies, Goldie. Now, Barker will be ruling it if they get a goal. Oh, that's, uh, well, that's what's well, gone to the line. It's in uh, the pocket. Who's that? That's a check side from Madsen. It's hit the post. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so we haven't had a goal this quarter, boys. No. Yeah, goal is a quarter, goal Robbie. So we've had five what? points from Mount Barker and four from Handel. And uh, what are the inside 50s? Quickly, Indy. Indy. Uh, inside 50 is 5, Mount Barker, 10, Harndorf. So they've actually got the advantage here, like I said, the boomerang effect from earlier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the boomerang, can't, can't, it's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's, love it. Love the work there by the 500 man, Indy. So was filling in for Jaden Hill this afternoon, who's uh, might be around at Colo's house. Yeah, a yeah, cu a cup of soup. cup of soup, I'd suggest. So, throw in. Daniel Roberts, which is Thomas bounces his way through and then is locked up in a big tackle. He was uh, pretty prominent in the first half, but as I said, uh, a few other Mount Barker teammates have also dropped out. Just that pressure and that run and carry yeah. of Harndorf has made him really pay. Matty Johns wins it down to Henry Bruce. He's locked up the tackle. Gets it to Thomas. That's better. Got it to uh, Bruce. Or Wiedenhofer, sorry. Gets it forward. Bouncing ball over the back. Mopping up as usual is uh, Perling. Oh. oh, he's taking the ground. And a good tackle there by Oddie, I think it was. Right in front of the coach's box. Clearing kick out of bounds. So I think the relieving kicker was out on the full, possibly. Yes, says the academy boy. So right under the scoreboard. What are we coming on? Twenty minutes, boys. Sorry, no. Downfield be taken by Worthley. As yeah, twenty minutes, eighteen minutes, nineteen minutes. Come on, Worthley. Backs himself as he runs along the line, goes long, but I tell you what, now it's out on the full, and uh, be Eckerman cool kick. will take the free kick this time from under the scoreboard. Well. Well, oh, that's gone straight down the throat of a Mount Barker player. Yeah, Wortley, who actually kicked it out in the four, he gets a second chance. This time he goes for the wider space, puts it across the Malarkey lines. So Malachi, short pass, and the, this could be danger if it doesn't hit. Grabbed by uh, Thomas, great, well great. done. Go Goes, on. but he's run down a good, strong tackle applied by Buckley. And, uh, geez, Mount Barker, just that, even though Mount Handel for well in control of the game, just that 
physical presence and the pressure they're applying, Goldie. Yep, Buckley goes to the short. Uh, Going to have to come back That's here. That's probably why they're the top side undefeated because they uh, don't give a sucker an even break, well, as they say. Here's a go. Yench from 60. Hayden. Hayden. Lovely mark overhead. So I tell you what, pretty impressive, this lad. I tell you what, you don't want to see this. There's just some signs here, Goldie, that this could turn into a real clinic in this last quarter. Mount Bargy, you'd hate to see him being blown out of the water because they are the second-ranked team. What message would it send to the competition, which Handorf certainly would want to send that to, well, not unbeatable, but uh, it's going to take a good side to beat us and Mount Barker just have to keep keeping on, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. So mm -hmm. Sam Hayden, opportunity to kick his second of the afternoon. Nice Sets kick. it on its way, Alexandrina end. There we go. The goal umpire, Big M, he's pretty happy with that, I suggest. Yeah. Raises the two digits. So Sam Hayden actually finally, boys, at the 20-minute mark of the third quarter, gets the first goal of the stanza with a good long shot. So Handorf just... Cruising along 10 9 at Mount Barker, 2 8 here on the call with the wall. Rob? Yeah, pretty impressive. Uh, he's, he's had a really good game, hasn't he? He's just done everything. He's everywhere. So, so he's uh, on the wing now. Or he's, uh, he's been on the wing. Yeah, so he's uh, he's a good acquisition since he came from Sturt, didn't he, boys? Oh, he's down, uh, at, down uh, at Sturt. Premiership player at Handorf, then went to Sturt, now yeah. he's back. So He saw the light. So in the middle for Handorf, it'll be Roberts up against, Daniel Roberts up against Johns. Robert won that one. Yench fumbling around. Tom Hughes kicks the ball towards centre forward. That's a mark. Uh, got the sun right in the eyes here. I think it it's Harley Montgomery. He kicks the ball deep. Has he got the Better. radar on now? Yeah. Well, he's missed a few. Finally gets on the board there. 3-8 now, Mount Barker. Handorf 10 goals, 9. So, good reply there from Mount Barker, as I mentioned. We just need him to sort of just uh, consolidate a little bit. Don't get really, let the result blow out to something that it shouldn't. And uh, the third goal there being raised by Harley Montgomery. So, they move on to 3-8 to 10-9. 21, nearly 22 minutes expired here. It's on Probably the a two-goal breeze again, boys. So, um, yeah, nice long kick by Harley. So, so back in the middle, Giles. Against Daniel Roberts, Nick Hankins in there, Dylan Madsen, Yench, Henry Bruce, Tom Hughes, Mark Thomas, D Rob won that one. Off hands, Henry Bruce, Madsen, under pressure from Hughes, gets a kick away towards the half forward line. James Hughes is down there for Mount Barker. Can he collect it? He's under pressure here from Ingram. And Hughes wraps up Ingram in a tackle, cross half forward line for Handorf. 23 minutes gone, Handorf, 10 goals, 9, Mount Barker, 3 goals, 8. One goal apiece in this quarter. So Daniel Roberts and Giles, more wrestling and going for the ball. Comes down to Hankin. Nick Hankin for Handoff drives it towards the old school board pocket. Oh, oh good defensive run taken by Lyons. Been impressed with him. He might uh, probably be the leading performer at the moment from Mount Barkers. Every game we've seen this season on HFL Media, he's been pretty handy. So Lyons right in the back pocket. Nick Ingram standing the mark. So Lyons, of course, in the country championships next week. Puts a high ball towards Giles and Roberts. Daniel over the top also with another fist. Grouch. Ball comes down oh, to Grouch. Rob's he got it. Towards us. And bouncing right in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Might get a comment here from uh, Kyle Cheney. taken Cheney out there. <laughs> so Kyle Cheney with the result and free kick. Right back in, in back front of the dream maker. With Rob Shield. <laughs> I thought it was going to get the band. <laughs> In fact, uh, Indy 5... It would have imploded on the Dream Maker. Indy 500 nearly got a stat of his own. <laughs> so, Cheney goes across play, off the ground. He's got a loose man there. In Eckerman, who in turn moves the ball on out wide. Looking for Daniel Roberts. Look at the big man sprinting at oh. Shane Bolt style. Leaves it to his smaller teammate to get it. They get it back into Vergara. Oh, nice little chip up the line. Finds uh, Madsen, who's all over the ground now. Madsen drives it further afield. Ingram. It's our man Ingram. So, Nicky Ingram. Great use of the ball once again by the Magpies. Sam Williams Straight the on. ball towards the top of the oh. corridor. Hayden. Big leap back there from Hayden. Oh. No, the back is Williams. It's called by Goldie. Can he get it? Got his boot to ball. No, Gosh. not in time. It was set up for him, but just couldn't get his boot to ball. So, uh, that's the fifth point of the quarter for Hardorf. They've kicked one goal five. Mount Barker kicked one goal five. So, equal. Oh, uh, good mark. Yench from the kick out from Stokes, I believe it was, or Worthley. Yench. Quickly moves it on into the pocket. That man, Sam Williams, who had a chance just a few seconds ago, will have a shot here, unless he'll lob it up. So right in front of the members' balcony here at the Mount Barker Recreation Centre. No doubt getting a bit of advice from the hometown supporters. So Williams, kick outside 50, take his best 
leg. I tell you what, he's given it a oh, hoof. Crikey, what a kick. It oh. has taken what his best thing. I tell you, that's a sensational goal. That was into the teeth no of the slight d- breeze too, boys. No doubt Dallas uh, has caught that one from Dartfish. That was that a magnificent a, finish. That would be a contender, Dallas. Tag that one, Mark. That was a magnificent finish by Sam Williams. As I said, he's uh, been pretty handy, consistent all afternoon, just topping off with a, a very good long goal. Did Rob? I tell you, boys, we've got, we got Handor Flackwood in about four weeks. I reckon we'll take ten stats men with us and just do the stats on all the main players like the Cheenies, the Yenches and all of that, out of interest. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, Rob, I think the... Uh, the man taking the stats for Black would do uh, goals. Would, well, I hope he gets more use than he did last <laughs> oh, time. Yeah, of course, getting the goal in the dying <laughs> moments are only goal. Oh, yeah. Back in the centre as the sun breaks through again, streaming right in the face of the Dream Maker. Pitch area from the ruck contest. Looks like the umpire's picked on. out a free Williams kick and it's again. going to Williams again. That man, he's on fire at the moment. 25 minutes gone, three quarter time looming. Gives it to Madsen. Have they got time for one more major? Puts it forward. Oh, good mark taken back there by Lyons. Piece of paper's gone. Goes right across here, finds Billy Stokes. Stokes in turn ships up a high ball. Thomas is there and also Worfley. Oh, That's good a good grab. stretching mark. Gets over the top to Mark Thomas, the skipper. Gives it back to Grouch. Oh, a bit of sidestep there as he got around Hayden. Gives it back to uh, Worfley, who's run on. That's better play by the mag, put by the uh, bruise, but he chips it straight up the line and finds that man purling. He's yep. enjoying a pretty good 200th game. Goldie? So. Purling just near us. He'll go past the dream maker here with the kick. Oh, right on three quarter time. 11 10 to 3 8. So 76 to 26. It's a 50 point margin. And uh, Mount Barker, I think they started the turn with five points. Or there or thereabouts. Yeah, 2 3, I think it was. Um and they've oh, got yeah, one goal. One Harley five, Montgomery five, had a few one chances. Six, yep. Yep. Harley Montgomery had a few chances and eventually got a goal, but Harndorf uh, making the most of their opportunities extend their lead to 50 points at three-quarter time. Uh, Rob? Um, the, showdown, the showdown started too, boys. Quickly, Port two goals. Crows 1-1. One, one. So, Indy, uh, some stats? Some stats, Indy. Right, some stats. Right. So um, it was a pretty low quarter in terms of ruck work. It was a pretty competitive, gritty quarter. So we only had 14 total ruck taps, four for Mount Barker and um, 10 for Handorf in that quarter. Uh, two clearances even as well. Once again, a pretty gritty match. So we weren't seeing too many centre clearances. Um, and of course, a domination in inside 50s for Handorf, uh, 16 to six uh, only. Yeah. Just and and the boomerang factor. And the boomerang. Yeah, of course, the boomerang factor. So what Handorf like to do is they like to lock their forward half of the ground in so it continuously um, comes back into their forward 50. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yep. Of course, Matty Cooper there passed Handorf. Great, and no doubt he's played a lot of these derby matches. Of course, a couple of male medals, a couple of flags for the Mighty Pies, and he'd be pretty happy with his boys at the moment as they lead 11 10 76 to Mount Barker 3 8 26. As Goldie said, a clear cut 50 point margin as we go around the grounds for Mortgage Choice, Adelaide Star Buses, Jarrett Nissen, Chris Shaw, Accounting, and Ned Whiskey. And we have. Raiders 11 13, Macclesfield 3 6, and uh, bearing mm. in mind they, uh, the Bloods beat the Raiders yeah. at a uh, corresponding game in the mm. first round. That's at so Callington, correct? Down at Callington. It'll be sunny down there. The sunblock will be out there. Yeah. And uh, I reckon Colo's getting better by the minute every time he gets this score, and uh, thank to him for sending him through. Onca Valley 14 16, and leading your raid to three goal four. Jeez, so, as Malcolm Williams was saying, a very <laughs> important game in the concept of uh, where they could find themselves in second position tonight, the Dogs. Good. They three came losses, into this game. Uh, three losses in a row for you, Raylor, on the trot. Yes, yeah, so have to uh, check that up on their uh, files. But uh, Onca Valley sitting one point behind Mount Barker as we came into round 12. Obviously, Mount Barker, even the most optimistic person, would think a 50 point ball game is going to be hard to change around three quarter time. So the doggies could well be in second spot. Uh, Chunga and Blackwood, that'd be good to get a score there because, uh, well, your Raylor could slip down the ladder and, uh, well, Mount Lofty having the buy, so they don't improve. They'll Where's still be that five one? wins. That's out at uh, Royal Chunga. Oh, yeah. And uh, as we know, uh, 
Blackwood always have trouble beating a Chunga. It's their bogey side of the past couple of seasons. So, as Malcolm Williams said, a pretty interesting build-up towards the end of the Hills Football League season. And, uh, well, every win's counting, and certainly for the Magpies, as they, I think Goldie will be number 26 here. There or thereabouts, Pistols, yep. Consecutive wins, so uh, mm. maybe they're making... Lofty, lofty not far behind. So, uh, who they got next week? They That'd actually play Mount Barker after Ooh, the uh, so bye. A couple of, yeah. And, of course, we'll be seeing... What the are we doing? We'll be next seeing the doggies. We're, we're, we're looking forward to going out to the, uh, the Lobethal Oval. Lobethal, Lobethal oh, yeah. and Onkers. Yep. And, as I said, we'll try, and, we'll try and bring you an update with what's happening over at Nairn Oval, Lobethal and Nairn. So. I, I tell you what, I can give you an exact score right now. Goldie, Man on the Goldie, spot, Goldie, 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 no doubt about you. As uh, Harndorf kept in their huddle here by Coach Golding. Matt Bark already in position, but uh, no doubt Matt Golding, as Darcy Hugan said, he's such a good coach, just perhaps emphasising, you've got the foot on the throat here, boys, let's steam home and have a big win. As they already lead by 50 points, 11-10 to 3-8 here yeah. on HFL Media. So uh, don't uh, forget, if you want to watch the game or listen to it, yeah. just go to hillsfooty.com and uh, click on Watch Live on your mobile phone, your handheld or your computer or... Even if you've got a smart TV. So, update from Nan. Uh, you asked for it. We'll give it On to you. On the spot. HFL Media. Lobethal 8 11, uh, leading Nan 5 10. So, the, still the decision up for grabs over there. So, over here, as we start the last quarter, you'd suspect that Honda are on their way to catching a fifth, a record fifth successive Courier Cup. And the Breezes presentation back to follow. About three, bo uh, three goals, pistols. 50 point margin. Up high sets up with Johns against Daniel Roberts. Roberts up high, fists the ball forward, taken here by Madsen. Goes bang inside the forward 50 arc over the top, bouncing ball first to get to be Luke Roberts, but the ball evades him and goes out of bounds by the behind post. Wellington that road into the ground. So quick transition already in what uh, 12 seconds, and there's a ball up right in Handorf's uh, goal area nearly. Got the sun right in the dream maker now. Unlike last week, we had rain. Yep. Fog, rain, Fog, rain, hail. Cuddling together. So boundary throwing Luke Roberts up against Big Johns. In that forward pocket area. Oh, ball comes out. Shot at goal. Vergara, is it? It's gone through for a minus score there. So, first point on the board there for Harndorf. Have we seen Joel Leak? Probably no need to bring him out. Looks like he's got the shin iced. Yeah, he does look like, yeah, over the shin distance. Or the knee, uh, Goldie. Uh, anyway, ball in the Knee. We'll go with the knee pocket. and the shin. Tamed by Wortley, get across to Andrew Skovitz. Haven't seen a lot of him this afternoon. Puts a big Johnsy rises over the top. I stand his ground. David and Goliath there was Nick Hankin. And the smaller man in front took a pretty good contested mark in front of the, uh, the bigger opponent. Chips the ball in. Oh, nearly one in. Oh, that's Nike clever. That's gave clever. us the ball cleverly and set sail for goal. He said, I didn't have to mark it. I'll oh, finish it lovely. off anyway. That's a great finish by Cooper Nykamp. I said, very athletic young footballer. And perhaps could be uh, anything at a higher level, I suggest. And he certainly finished that. So, well, Colo 90 said that, seconds, he? yeah, 90 seconds into the final term, and Handorf have added to their lead as they move on to 12 11, leading Mount Barker 3 8. Yep, Handorf skip out now to a 57 point lead. Pistols, two minutes into the fourth quarter, sun is beaming right into the Dream Maker, perfect conditions. Mount Barker over at this stage could be up for a final. It's looking a treat. In the middle of the ground, Matt Yench kicks it out towards us in the Dream Maker. Shinned off Luke Roberts out towards Sam Hayden. He's been good to oh, Dylan Madsen. Handball. Lovely handball. Kick inside. 50. Lions backing back, coming through with Salt. Dangerous Got position here for Mount Barker. Running back will be Brooks. Oh, gee whiz. I'm not sure about that. It's going to be another handoff goal. Oh, I thought oh, oh, Salt no. just had to po poke that one. Lines is in a bit of trouble out here, boys, too. Got the biggest corky out, I think. I reckon that passage of play would be for the highlights. Real no. five side has uh, coughed up a couple of chances there for both sides. William the Bruce drives out wide to the run of a team out there. I think it might be uh, Oddy. Goes further afield. Hughes lurking over the back. He receives the ball. Steadies goes inside. Oh, another player down behind play here. Down behind play. There is a player down as a big Giles has lumbered out and taken a mark as uh, Billy Stokes, I think it was, down behind play. Just slowly getting to his feet. Sammy Hayden coming back. And Maybe a yeah, bit I of friendly fire. Accidental, Maybe, uh, accidental run in. So, meanwhile, big Luke Giles 
Alexandrina into the ground, sets the ball, that's pretty straight. Goa Pai didn't actually move as it went over his head, so Mount Barker getting their fourth on the board through the agency of the big man, big agile's Lukey Giles. So, will Mount Barker still be in the top three? Uh, it's pretty close, uh, Goldie. Well, they'll be even now with a lot of teams. Yeah. Well, Hard to they say. got that odd point. Yeah, they got that odd point. So they'll Which be their 13 yeah. at the moment. So yes, so they they'll be third. Awesome. Just hanging on. Just hanging on. So four goals, eight Mount Barker. Hard off, 12 goals, 12. It'll be Big Johns against Daniel Roberts in Ruck. Both Ruckmen will go at it. Roberts, good work uh, there to Yench. He kicks it towards the half forward line. I've got the sun right in my eyes here. Clearing kick from Mount Barker out towards us in the Dream Maker. Diving with Stokes. In fact, he earns a free kick, is he? Yep. Against Push Sam back Hayden. Goldie, I think. Yep. So Billy Stokes. He goes to the short pass towards Thomas. That's out in the full. Hayden, short pass to Williams. Williams goes inside 50. Cooper Nightcamp put the hands out in front of him. On hands and knees, shovels it out to Buckley. Cleverly, he'll have a shot for go. No, he won't. He'll go right to the line over the top of the head of Luke Roberts, and it's gone through for a minor score. So hard off peppering the goals in the uh, first five minutes of this closing term. They've raised one goal, three. Mount Barker have put a goal on the board. Handoff leading 12, 13, 85 to 4, 8, 32 here on the call. The Wild on HFL Media Trust you enjoying our coverage. Tips it out. Take to uh, Wortley in the cricket net pocket here. Balls back towards Brooks. Oh, it's an Aaron Handball coming in. Oh. It's Williams. He's taken hard. Good. High by the drill bit in Brooks. Off he goes. And Williams trying to play on I there. just wants to make it hard for himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> handballs towards Nycamp. Misses everyone coming through as Hayden. Finally comes back to Madsen. He's certain of the race. Kicking away was Hankin up here towards Vergara. Wearing him closely is Chapman, I think it is. Sorry, Oddie, it is. So Oddie holding the ball in there. So still dangerous territory here. We'd be some 40 metres out from the Wellington end ground, uh, end of the ground. Ball to Yench around the corner. What oh, yep, can the silky one do? Can he put his stamp on proceedings? Ooh. No. Just drifts across the face through for a minor score. So hard off. Fifth shot of the quarter. That's not a bad when we've only played five minutes. So it just shows they're running home. That's probably Matt Golding said, you got the foot on the throat, let's finish it off. So the kick out that had come from Wortley for the ruse, runs out of the Shane Collins square, goes long, and as far as Luke Roberts, who takes uncontested mark, sends the ball back in where it's come. No, he drops it short as a lead of salt. Oh, and he's oh. met heavily by Thomas. Jeez, that and was a heavy hit. Well, I'd like to see that one a lot, but uh, salt is up, so perhaps it wasn't as bad as it looked as far as yeah, the, he's the he's contact, he's but he's salt grabs the ball goes. and says, why well, are you pushing some? Yeah, I'm going to the goal thing. line. And it's surely for point break range. Who's well, gonna, of course he would, yeah. <laughs> going to convert his fourth for the game, which he has. Young Benny Salton, certainly a big impression on, uh, on the commentary team here this afternoon. He could well be in the votes, He's boys. He's starting to play around in your votes there, Pistols. Yeah. Could well. Could become a love child at some stage. <laughs> no, he's been really impressive, hasn't he? He's um, tall, tall, straight. Uh, Mobile. He's deceptively, uh, he's a bit taller than what he looks. And he's mobile, and, uh, yeah, he gets in behind the pack. And, and he had a great man, uh, Graham Sinclair, who'd know more about it than me, suggesting that he's probably a better cricketer than footballer. Yeah, well, well it must be Gee, well, I would have sent him over for the World Cup, and don't yep. forget tonight Australia taking on South Africa, Robbie Shearwood. Yes, our little friends. Hope they forget their sandpaper. So the ball back in the centre. Sting's certainly gone out this game. Handorf 13-14, Mount Barker 4-8. Career Cup final for 2019. Magpies marching towards their fifth successive. Roberts got the tap down, straight down the throat of Montgomery, drove it forward. Woodhouse spilled it, taken away by Williams. I tell you what, he could be up there too. Gets across to Vergara. He's ridden in the ground. Good, strong tackle by Wiedenhofer for the Barkaroos. As I said, Mount Barker at least uh, fighting out this contest. They don't want to be get blown away, but at the moment it's a 60-point margin, 10-goal margin in favour of the competition leader of the Premiership favourites and defending Premier. Up they go again. Roberts, oh, Daniel, fits it forward, taken away by Bruce, I think it is, or Weed Noffer gets oh. it forward, taken by Thomas, gives it a grouch, shreds his way through a couple of magpies, high kick towards the top of the square, purling back there with Johns, ball bounce forward, coming to meet it there, oh, it was Ingram. Comes back to Thomas, feeds out a handball back to Hughes. Can he get a right shot? He can. He got it away. It's just drifting right on the top of the goal square. Well done by Perling, miserly. 
and forces it over the line for a minor score. So Mount Barker for 10, trailing Arndorf 13 14 here in the call to yeah. wild. Matt Yench to bring the ball in. Will he go to barrel? <laughs> yes, he does. In the middle of the ground, over the top of Luke Roberts. It's almost at half forward for the Magpies. Barnett coughs it up, yep. gives it back out there. Teammate feeds it out here to Wortley and turn feeds a handball out to Thomas. He's worked pretty hard this afternoon. The freshman gives it back to Wortley, looking for space, but he's corralled so much by Hayden, forced over the bearing line. Just shows you the intensity to handle. In fact, paid holding the ball, I think it is, to Hayden and to touch a cramp there for Wortley. He's battled pretty hard. First up forward and in defence in the second half. So Hayden, who could well be on the votes, Goldie, will well, take the free kick right in front playing, of the... Uh, you're playing with your magnet ball there. Perhaps a deflated uh, Barkaroos crowd at the Hayden, canteen. Hayden kicks it into Nykamp. Goes to Yench. No, he... Parker Boss. He was going to go for a run there, Yench, but he, Parker Boss kicks it inside 50. Oh, Luke <laughs> Roberts, that's a push in the back. <laughs> He's trying to go for a bit of hang time there. He's had a bit of a mixed bag this afternoon, Lukey. So, Dry July, I think he wants yeah. to get back on the <laughs> sauce. Montgomery, is that uh, that's Bruce? He goes to Harley Montgomery, has a bounce, a handball out towards our cut off by Eckerman. Kick forward for the Magpies on uh, hands and knees. Ruse looking to clear it out here. Comes out to Bruce, he goes towards Giles, gets onto that left boot, goes into the middle of the ground, one on one contest, off hands. Oh, good work there by Chapman. He'll get the handball out onto the wing here to Thomas. He goes to Wortley. Wortley kicks the ball over the top of Yench. Finds a teammate in Henry Bruce with Sam Hayden on the mark. Henry Bruce goes inboard, finds Thomas. This is the co-captain. He's batted on pretty manfully. Goes short and finds Payne, who's just drifted in space to the half forward area. So he'll have a, a shot here. From just outside the 50 arc, I'd suggest as Mount Barker work towards the Alexandrina or the Andrew Ozenlechner Koala tree pocket yep. in this last term. So they've only raised four for the afternoon. Can they bring a fifth up for the agency of Payne? No, is it just away for a minor score? So Harndorf, well in control of this game. And as I said, five consecutive Courier Cup wins a history for the league. Ball comes out here. Off hands from Hayden. Parker Bowles, taken by Hayden, who's everywhere, getting better as the game goes on. He gets to another man who's run all over the field. And Madsen. Madsen, he just sells a bit of candy. Gone. Strolls oh. around a couple of uh, Barkaroos. Chips it up here to Ingram. Yep. Ingram turns, delivers to ha Hanby, who just slumbers out the big man. So I'd suggest, well, within his kicking uh, capabilities here, Goldie would be just outside the 50 arc, but mm -hmm. as we've seen earlier in the game, particularly one big long goal and also a few long clearances, the past South Adelaide man. Quite capable here of kicking it at the Wellington end of the ground. So, Michael Hamby kicking from 40 metres. Goes for goal. It's probably 50 more like it. Right to the line, off hands, minus score. So 12 minutes gone. Harndorf, 13 goals, 15. Mount Barker, 4 goals, 10. Tell you what, boys, uh, Harndorf could be further afield, uh, Robbie Sheward. Uh, last term they kicked two goal five. In this quarter they've already kicked two goal five and we're uh, 11 minutes in, so that margin could be greater than what it is at the moment, 92-34. Ruse moving it forward. Bruce was around the area. Kick, smothered. Looks like Nykamp. J Chaney goes with a little pop-up pass. Wiedenhofer, I think it is, out towards William Bruce. Montgomery in close, Hamble to Grouch onto that left boot. Oh, oh, is that bummed over the boundary line? Yeah, it would have come off his head, I reckon. So that's gone out of bounds. Yeah. Looks like off um, Vergara's body. So boundary throw in. Matt Roberts against Luke Giles in ruck. Went over to two of those two. Tom Hughes with the kick inside 50. Sam Hayden up against Stokes. Good battle. About 15 metres out from Mount Barker's goal. Coming through there, it looks like Stokes. And he's wrapped up in the tackle by Sam Hayden. About 20 metres out from the Ruse goal. Yeah, great tackle. So, ball held up. The Barker Ruse pushing some late goals in this contest, which is uh, well gone from them. The horses run up the road as they trail 4-10 to 13-4. Threading his way out there. Intercepted by Montgomery. 
Buckley. Nice chain of handballs. Ends here with uh, Parker Bowles, I think. It's Here's straight pace. through the centre. Then gets a wobbly old kick up towards Roberts. Oh, ricochets off his shin. The Lukey followed up as Ingram. Goes out wide here to Madsen, who's found some space and takes a good mark under pressure from Grout. So once again, just good running numbers, using the football yep. really well. Just very confident in each other's ability hand off. They just know when they give the ball, there'll be a teammate backing up. And as Shane Collins will say, just the trade of a very good football team. And they certainly are as they gun for... Uh, well, it'll be number three in four years, I think, Goldie. Yep. Come September, we'll take a good side to beat him. So, Madsen, set shot. Oh, great kick. Goal up high, does a move as it goes straight over the noggin. So, third goal of the quarter, the final term. for Handorf through the agency of Madsen. That's his first of the afternoon. And they ride further off in the distance. Handorf Magpies is now 14-14, 98. Mount Barker of 14-34. Rob, let's go to Indy for some stats. Yeah, so for some stats, um, uh, the ruck work has been completely dominated by Hardwick in this quarter, just six uh, taps to one. Uh, it's also been pretty low, obviously. Uh, once again, we're getting uh, into that nitty-gritty contest that's preventing uh, frequent ruck work from occurring. But uh, Hardwick has certainly made the most of it. We'll go to you shortly again for some inside 50s. All right, up I will come in as you set up another nitty-gritty Ruck contest. This yep. time, Matt Roberts wins it down over Giles. I bet Giles, he managed to score it. Takes the ground with him. Tommy Hughes in there fighting hard. Dispossessed. And finally, a kick out by Whedon. Oh, oh, oh big high fly oh, mark taken by Cheney, who said, dropped out of the game a little bit, but he hasn't had much work to do as the ball's been at the majority of the Gets there, there wide here to Vergara. Exciting youngster. He turn goes up the line to Ingram over the top of his head. Taken by Lyons, who's batted well. Gets to the centre of the ground. William Bruce feeds it back to Lyons. Lyon toe pokes up line towards Payne, grabs the ball and goes long. Here's a chance for the Roosers to go inside 50. A couple of targets back there. Perling going to ground there for the Barker Roos. Looked like it was Ross Brooks. And it's been ruled that he was in French. So the regular yep. defensive co-captain with a chance here for a rare shot at goal. We saw him uh, in the quarter before. Mm. Have a shot. Have a shot with a result it, for behind. I think in the inside 50s? Uh, yeah, inside 50, so we're looking at nine for Handorf and just three for Mount Barker. So once again, we've seen dominance from Handorf in so the forward 50 and more importantly, the forward half. So Ross Brooks, I'd suggest a rare goal for the Barker co-captain. Puts it through, straight through the high diddle diddle. It's a fifth here for Mount Barker. And they move on to 5, 10 to 14, 15, I think it is. As the scoreboard's starting to glow pretty... Uh, Pretty brightly as the uh, gloom starts to settle in. What's been a, a very good day, but uh, a bit gloomy in the Mount Barker camp, you suggest, as uh, really they've had the pants pulled down this afternoon by a very good Handorf side, Rox. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great afternoon, and Handorf just too good, aren't they? They're a really, really good side. Good to watch, too. So, uh, and Barker have uh, tried really hard. So, back in the centre. Matty Johns up against Daniel Roberts. They both stay on the ground. Johns got it, but taken away by Parker Boz. Freds his way clear. Gets the ball forward for the Magpies. Bouncing out towards the coach's box from Mount Barker. First get to be Matty Vergara. Got time to grab it. Ball steady. Puts it in towards Salt. Leaps. Got his hands to it. Bouncing ball. Back there is Roberts. He runs into a, a brick wall there. Ball, ball fed out here. Here's a chance for Ingram. Measures the kick forward. And Nycat once again. That absolutely outstanding ability in the air. Inspector Gadget. Yeah, gadget arms. Yes. Stephen Copping esque if uh, people remember him. Played for Essendon in the base. Elasticity plus. Exactly. Go, go, gadget. So, Cooper Nykamp. Chance to kick his second goal of the second. quarter. Second goal of the game. Yep. Umpire moves a little bit in the goals, but uh, he's pretty happy. It gives the nod. Umpire calls all clear. Just a lot of versatility in the forward line today yeah. without Big Das. But yeah, they just uh, how many got how many different goal kickers we got pistols we got that there. I'll just uh, take hand. off my shoes and socks so I can add them up for you, Rob. Hey, I'll just take off the shoes and socks and <laughs> add them up for you. There's that many, yeah. And uh, where's the ball going on the road? Yeah, it's ta ambulance is taking it. Oh no, here it is. And for our uh, LA, LA uh, NBA. Followers, um, Kawhi Leonard has gone to the Clippers with Paul George from Oklahoma City Thunder. Well, so no one saw that coming. No. That's very exciting news. Uh, eight goal kickers to answer your question. Uh, <laughs> no, well, meanwhile. I brought that up while you could count it, Jeffrey. Ball back in the middle. Harley Montgomery's dispossessed. Back up. Oh, Henry Bruce flicks out to Bruce. Uh, sorry, to Thomas. 
Thomas brings it forward. It is a chance for uh, Brooks again. He's got the goal kicking fever, but this one uh, is offline and bounces out of bounds in the old school ball pocket. So good work there in the centre by the uh, Henry Bruce getting the ball out to Mark Thomas. So a boundary throw will take place in the uh, right forward pocket as the Ruse work towards the Alexandrina end of the ground in this final quarter. But as I said, the horse well and truly probably back at Handorf in the stables. They've come here, they've conquered 14-15, leading Mount Barker 5-10 here in the call of the wild. Stoppage inside 50 here for the Ruse. Looks like Brooks will do the ruck work against Daniel Roberts coming through. Thomas is out the back here, ready for it. His ball was uh, intercepted there. Flying shot at goal, Wiedenhofer. It's marked on the last line by Yench, just near the point post. So Matt Yench will unload here. Could be another torp. No, just goes the normal drop punt. Nice kick. Over the top of a couple of players. Grouch. Tries to work the ball out from the stoppage and he's held up in the stoppage there by Buckley. So 20 minutes gone. Handor 14 goals, 15. Mount Barker 5 goals, 10. So that's a 59-point margin for Handorf. Hayden in the ruck. Fisted forward by Mount Barker. Daniel Roberts. He'll go out towards... Hankin. Hankin. Nearly run down as he managed to get his kick away. Bouncing ball towards Salt. He runs past it. Grouch getting back there. Takes position. He's taken the ground. Oh, good tackle. And a good tackle by Parker Boz. Right on the edge of the cricket pitch. So the umpire will come in and ball up as the sun just pipes through, uh, perhaps one of the last times through the cloud. Sets it up. Daniel Roberts wins the ball down. Wortley coughs it up. Billy Stokes fixes the ball out to Thomas. Clever little dinky kick up the line. Finds Wortley right in front of the Dream Maker commentary. Sells a bit of candy around Salt. Puts it down towards Woodhouse. Coming into sport was Yentz. Stokes gives the ball. Interrupts that. Taken by Madsen, he's ridden into the ground. Taken by Woodhouse, gets a quick clearing kick. Bouncing kick taken by William Bruce. Feeds out the handball to the Swan Montgomery. Finds himself a little bit of time. Goes back over the top to William Bruce. He's confronted by Cheney. Manages to go backwards towards Stokes. Stokes undecide what he wants to do with the ball. Finally under pressure, gets to the Montgomery. He really didn't want it as he set upon. Finally, Bruce, scrappy football from the Roos, but they get the ball forward, but getting back there and taking a mark is Matty Roberts for the... Boys. Roberts goes to Cheney. Goes into the back pocket. Finds Matt Yench. Yench with a, well, 30-metre kick. Finds Vergara. It's still in the defensive 50 for Handorf. So Vergara looking for options. Goes to short part to Matt Roberts with Mark Thomas on the mark. Goes towards the running Yench, who was involved in the lead-up. Goes out towards Salt, yeah, centre wing. So yeah. good build-up here from the Magpies. He goes into the middle Williams. of the ground, finds Sam Williams to Sam Hayden. This is great play from Handorf. Kick inside, 50, backing back. Matt Roberts. Oh. In fact, that was okay. Nykamp. Almost a toe poke from oh, Nykamp. Parker, Parker Bowers, Bowers has Bowers. done the job. That was great movement from Handorf yeah. once again. It's fantastic. Good to watch. Yeah, fantastic work. And set up with the, uh, the silky pass from the half back out to the wing area from Yetch. And oh, Perling's just, gone forward. They just took it very Maybe the Stallion. Rear goal and he's 200. We'll wait and see if that... Uh, yep. Eventuates. But at 21 minutes gone, Parker Bowers just putting another one. And Handorf adding their fifth goal for the term. They've actually kicked five goal five for the term. They're 15 to 15, leading Mount Barker five goals. He's gone to full here. forward. So the Perling. Pe Perling. The GOAT, as described by Darcy Hurrigan. We'll see if he uh, Darcy is a goal kicker. We'll see if, Let's kick it long. if Scott can uh, emulate Big Darcy. So back in the centre, Ruckman Gabbard. Where he started his career, Pistols, in under 10s. Okay. You were in the pocket he, he, beside him. I, no, I was. He kicked six goals <laughs> against your Raider in under 10s yeah? in his first game. Really? Yeah. Someone said, you, someone said you gave him seven of them. I did. <laughs> How many uh, Colo kicked in his first game? Anyway. Well, Salt kicked three in a Here court. we go. Taken by Daniel Roberts. He puts it towards... Perling! Oh! Yeah! Just like team... Almost <laughs> on cue. <laughs> Scotty Perling. And look, they're getting out of the cars. <laughs> this is like with Big Dars kicked his hundred. If I tell you, they'll all run on the ground here for the Stallion. Yeah, I hope he kicks it. So Scotty Perling would say one of his rare shots. I can't tell you how many goals he's kicked this season, Goldie. I don't think any. He's more used to stopping them, I suggest. <laughs> so Scott Perling, 35 metres. Player, straight in front. They'll come from everywhere. Oh, got it. Look at this. Dallas, get hold of this. This is, <laughs> Dallas, get hold of this. This is Tony game. Lockett at SCG. <laughs> <laughs> They've come from everywhere. And Scotty Perling, what an ornament to the game. He's been a great servant. The club bringing up a rare goal in his 200th game. 
They won't worry about 200 games tonight. They'll be worrying about his goal. So Scott Perling joining the list of goal kickers and what's been a it's comprehensive win here. Normally. That's right. Be, uh, Matt Golding will be getting a pressure from uh, Scotty during the week. <laughs> I'll move him back to uh, full back now. He's done his bit. <laughs> yeah, Darce is probably on the phone to the coach. Quick, get him back. Get him back. My spot's in trouble. Uh, good to see. So Handorf careering away here. 106 plays 40, so 66 point margin, 11 goal margin in favour of the uh, Magpies. Pretty comprehensive by anyone's uh, method. As it comes out here, taken by Oddie, works forward for the Barkaroos, getting back to his Hanby. Yep. And look, he goes through this hard off side, and they've all contributed somewhere along the uh, the line this afternoon, haven't they, Goldie? Yeah, no Darcy in the lineup too. Here's Hankin, got the ball from Hanby. Away he goes, gets onto the left boot, kick inside 50. Taken there by Wortley, I reckon it is, to Thomas. Under pressure here from Perling, realises he's on the mark. He wants to get a... Uh, <laughs> he wants uh, to get a second. Another shot. Yeah, he puts across to Wortley, Thomas. Uh, Wortley's run on. Time he guides the ball up the wing, finds Payne. Payne flicks it out to Billy Stokes. Side steps, gives himself a bit of room. Oh, a sloppy kick gets back to Hughes, put him under pressure. Good enough to get out of the game to his brother, James, who runs through, has a flying shot. Wide, Yench is there. He's got support there from Matty Roberts. So the silky one clears it up the line and finds Daniel Roberts. So big Dan Rob gives it back to his skipper and Yench, who sort of buys He's time. Gonna go to size go bang up the it. line. Scoreboard wings fans, Young Salt picks him out nicely. Lovely, Mark. That's a replay of the previous transition yep. from that end. So Benny Salt, exciting youngster. Four goals this afternoon. Could be in the votes for the Jarrett Player of the Year. Puts it up. Here's a chance for the Sterling. Oh! oh the big game goes on. 40 metres out. Sets up. Oh! Oh! Scotty Burling, successive goals. <laughs> I tell you what, this is under 10 stuff, Goldie. <laughs> Has he got time for another four? <laughs> so the <to> stallion, <laughs> Scotty Burling, turning back the time here, turning back the... He's no defender. Under 10 days. I tell you, he's been wasted in defence all these years. <laughs> So what a rousing finish here by Handorf. About it, six goals this term. 17, 16, 117 Mount Barker capped on 5, 10, 40. So a comprehensive victory here to the competition leaders, that's for sure. Ball bouncing free in there, fighting hard is Henry Bruce. He's locked up there by Big D Rob, who uh, regroup and go for the ruck here against Giles. Roberts wins it down. Thomas got his head to it. Also in there is Hayden. He's wrapped up in a tackle by Mark Thomas. So play will recommence as 26 minutes gone. So uh, suggest a certain lady will be on the stage and, of uh, course, the Career Cup presentation to take place after this is hard off. Went it for a fifth record time in a row. Ball locked up there by Parker Bowers. Handball fed out there. Montgomery gives it off to Stokes. Stokes bounces. Steadies himself. Goes inside 50. Back there is Hamby on cruel bounce. And oh. there's a chance for William Bruce and... <laughs> Talk about Lux of Fortune for him. He thought he had it covered. Then uh, B grade bounce allowed William Bruce just to run in. And, uh, well, Rob, I don't think you're on. This is their most uh, productive quarter as far as goal scoring. Their third for the quarter. Rob, you're not even on. The ruse. As William you're Bruce. You're singing, then, yeah. A running goal at the 26 <laughs> minute mark. There we go. <laughs> Should have told him, keep him off, <laughs> uh, Goldie. <laughs> And just, of course, yeah, interesting. Of course, the uh, the grand final of the voice, I think, is on uh, tomorrow night. I know yeah. one bloke. Who, I know one bloke who definitely won't be on it. <laughs> so, ball coming back to the centre. So, six ten Mount Barker. As I said, kicked three goals this quarter, so they've actually fought the game out, but they still face a a pretty big uh, final and margin. Uh, quick quarter time score, boys. Crows uh, nineteen, Power nineteen. So ball comes out. Hayden right. overruns, taken by Montgomery. He's batted Brent Manfred. Comes back to that Mancini. Yep. Takes the mark. He's just a general back there, him and Yitch. Gives it back to his partner in crime and Yitch, who chips the ball up the line to big Daniel Roberts, who gives it back to the silky Yitch, who's run through. This time he goes bang with a barry to barrel. In deep. Comes off hands here. Chance around the corner to Buckley. Perling. Perling. Here's a chance oh. for the Stallion. Off hands. Oh. He's got two to beat here. Coming in his weed. He wants it. He wants it. He's holding the ball. It. The Stallion traps it under him. <laughs> Fighting hard. Oh, he got it out the back well door. done. And well I think that's Nick Ingram in the end. <laughs> yeah. And great work, persistence <laughs> by Perling. Yeah. Stone-like performance there yeah. as he just gave yeah, everything. Yeah. 
So yep. Nick Ingram uh, raises his third. No, first he kicked the first goal of the game for Handorf, and he could possibly kick the last wow. as it's checked up to 28 minutes. So could be bookends for Nicky Ingram, but uh, Handorf, <laughs> yeah. 19, 16 to 6 goal, 10. So comprehensive victory points, here, boys. boys. The belting. It is. What do we got? We've got 18 taps to uh, Handorf and three to Mount Barker. So uh, the Roberts boys dominating in the ruck. Back in the middle, Giles, under pressure there, held up, is Harley Montgomery. So we'll go at it again, 29 minute mark. Yeah. Have we William. got one more for Perling? Williams, kick inside 50, towards the half forward line. No, Hankin, here's a chance, he goes forward, Perling in the pocket. Oh, he wanted to take the chest mark there, tight on the boundary line. <laughs> He's been active, they're all pushing forward now. 30 minute mark. Look at that. No one in the forward half, uh, forward 50 or forward half of the ground for uh, Mount Barker. 19 goals, 15. Handorf, Mount Barker, 6 goals, 10. So boundary throwing. Probably last play of the match. Comprehensive win here for Mount Bar uh, Handorf in the Courier Cup final. Purling in the ruck. Out towards the boundary line. And that's gone out of bounds. He's doing it all now, I think, Goldie. Yep. Perling, the young st the stallion, he's got a new lease of life, that's for sure. He's rucking against Joel. Could be good here. for another 200 games, mate. Yeah, well, he, he's rucked before in his juniors. Perling, oh. pushed out of it there by Giles. Oh, that's a, almost a throw. That should be holding the ball, shouldn't it, yep. when you grab it in the ruck? Bobbling around in the forward line. Looks like Harley Montgomery got a handball out. Bruce, Henry Variety, out towards, I think oh, that's oh, Wiedenhofer, and that's gone out of out. bounds, so... You've just got to pick up a ball here on the boundary line. What's the inside 50s, Indy? Uh, inside 50s, we got 10 Mount Barker to uh, Handorf 15. So uh, five extra inside 50s for Handorf this quarter. And the boomerang effect? Yeah, the boomerang effect. Uh, yeah, of course, the boomerang effect. It's become pretty popular at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I think they've locked down play for the most part. Even when Mount Barker seem to get it out, it doesn't seem to be for the... So Matty Yetz with the result free kick just Handorf. plays a wedge shot and sets it up. Big Giles comes first to get it there for Mount Barker. Fists it forward. Hayden working hard at ground level. Dice is out the oh, salt. Yeah. He goes back to Madsen. Madsen with a clear shot goes towards the top of the square. Perling losing oh, his body yeah. cleverly, but uh, mm. only three for a minor score. So Perling, certainly the X factor. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, has been. 16 to 10. I worked it out, boys. The slingshot is when the ball keeps coming back. Okay, so Wortley brings it back in front of Dreammaker. Big oh, leap from Parker Biles, and that's a good strong well, grab. Perling's by himself here. He goes backwards here to Hayden. Perling's by himself. They're building here, called to play on. Just go long, to go long, go long. Just go Cheney long. will go out wide. He'll go backwards towards Yench. Yench with a little toe oh, poke. Jake Hamby, a challenge. Oh, oh. intercepted here Hagen, by Chapman. Hagen. Here's one bounce. Can he do a Manassa? No, he decides to chip it over to Woodhouse, who takes a mark here. So just coughed up there by Yench. The skipper. Jeez, that was uh, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> so Jake Woodhouse wasn't quite. Oh, there we no, go. It was lazy. Lazy wasn't lazy. a shocker, but it was lazy. So just be academic yeah, it here. <laughs> as it sits at six ten to nineteen sixteen. Handoff will finish on nineteen sixteen. Woodhouse sets at sail. That's a nice. And I tell you, that's a very nice finish to there finish the go. game with a goal. So they finish on seven ten. To Comprehensive 19, win to nineteen. 16, so Jake Woodhouse. Final uh, goal. What's, uh, well, mm, as Goldie called, uh, been a bit of a shellacking and uh, a masterly performance mm. here by the Barkaroos. So, well. Uh, hmm? Very mm. interesting. Yeah, okay. So, Rob. Rob. Just take... Follow pistols out. Yep. So that one not working. We're back. All right. Oh. Pistols are just heading out now with Rob to uh, the Courier Cup presentation. Is Dallas going to continue filming just for the Courier Cup final? Presentation. Yep. So back here at Howard, 
No, I was going to say Howard Lane. The old, uh, well, Howard Lane, Hanson Oval. And it was a comprehensive win for the Magpies. And uh, Jeff and Rob are just heading out now to presentations. Rob, we'll just go to you. Yep, yep, we'll just go to uh, Jeff, who's just doing the presentation shortly. Yep. So, Courier Cup final, of course. Jeff Pistola will be uh, presenting the pennant to the Magpies. They're fifth in a row. So we'll be back for that very, very shortly. Okay. Welcome everybody to Hanson Oval. So Dylan Madsen just coming out now. Well done, Dylan. And could also have Ross Brooks and Mark Thomas come forward for the winner. choice Second from Mount Barker is Mark Thomas. Played a good game there, Goldie. Yeah. <clears throat> 
<coughs> vår andra hand då. Let's sit out here, Goldie. Um, so, yeah, you have it. That's a wrap from. Uh, Mount Barker with uh, Harndorf winning the Courier Cup final and um, and uh, oh, Pistols, what's he doing out there? He might be having a chat to someone. Is he? You still on Dallas? Yep, okay. Dill. 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 He might be having a chat to someone. Oh, Dylan Madsen. <laughs> okay, we're joined here just up with the captain of the Harndor Football Club, Dylan Madsen. Dill, well done. Good win in the end. Um, yeah, just kept on running away from it. It was a tight battle. Um, but yeah, we were super happy with it. Four quarter hour effort. Uh, one player, so yeah, good one. Absolutely, mate. Being one of the great men of uh, we here uh, pre-match, just his, uh, his thoughts. Uh, Scott Perlings had just been cheered on the game. Great performance. And also, captain. Uh, probably the two best balls of the season. No, oh, he's, so he's um, called Goat, and that's, that's why the greatest ball oh, okay. uh, on and off the field. Yeah, could be happy for a better bloke, that one. So, yeah. oh, great career. We'll just say it's three quarter time, even though he's holding a comprehensive lead. I get the message why he's from Jake because it's the way the way he's written. Great, but just really kill off the opposition. That's certainly in the last quarter. Showed no signs of slacking. He just rattled on once again, moving the guy forward. Just your movement was fantastic. Yeah, that's something Goldie was all up. It's just that four quarter effort. Uh, the foot off and just keep uh, pressuring up because, yeah, you know it's going to be tough in finals. That's why we just four quarter effort going. Yeah, also, we said to ask, can, can your side get better? I know you're not about the way you're playing, but uh, can Handoff get better, which would be a, a thought for the <laughs> Always better. <laughs> We're going to be better. We um, always position score. Maybe a bit more defensive, but other than that, I think, yeah, it's always a positive. All right, and just personally, well done yourself. Have a, a really good game. You're certainly leading by example. Yeah, great great conditions today. Um, could have prepared that for my hands and footy in that, so but it makes it easier. Uh, 20 other blokes um, doing hard footing for them. Absolutely. And uh, get back to the team? Oh, uh, put on a good performance today, Absolutely. so yeah, it was a few goals, so it could be hard. We could yeah. And of course, that other key forward found in uh, by the name of Pearl. Yeah. I know, Pearling up forward, uh, handles down back. And don't mind that. <laughs> well, you're the man with the I'll be looking for you on the bar. So, uh, well done, Pearl. Another good one. Beautiful. Thank you very much today, boys. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. I'm joined there by Dylan Batson, the captain of Football Club. We've just seen another uh, pretty good victory by him, Rob. As he said, they. Uh, Room for improvement, which is certainly scary for the opposition. Yeah, I know. And, I mean, it's all the young fellas, too, Pistol. Um, yeah, you got your Perlings and all the experienced guys, Yenchi and all that down back. But, oh, they've just got talent everywhere, haven't they? They're really great to watch, too. Yeah, some of the transition day was sensational. Just the ball movement, particularly from that last line. You've got the generals back there in Yench and Cheney and just moving it forward, as you said, their midfield, Madsen, Hayden, and, uh, well, Mac missing big darts this afternoon, but they certainly made up for it with, uh, well, some fantastic goal kicking. Yes, well, we might have heard the uh, the best on Greta, so we got upstaged a little bit there by the uh, the Rossdale uh, situation. But uh, 
the votes and uh, maybe Shane Collins has probably uh, been home studying the videos that came through. But uh, boys, see what you uh, agree with us. Of, uh, yeah, no, that's fine. So we've got some... Uh, got some stats that matter yeah, here. Stats that matter. And Indy, just take us through us, mate, the boomerang effect. All right, so the boomerang effect from Harndorf uh, included Harndorf constantly dominating the forward half in terms of possession in order to... Uh, prevent uh, opposition ball possession, which led to a lot of inside 50s. So we saw 55 inside 50s uh, to Mount Barker's 39. So that's an extra, uh, yeah, extra 16 inside 50s in Handorf's favour. It certainly uh, made up a lot of the score, not to mention, of course, making the most of those opportunities. Uh, in terms of centre clearances, Mount Barker actually had the, s slender, uh, the slenderest of uh, advantages with 15 centre clearances to um, Arndorf's 14. But of course, with Mount Barker, they seem to bomb it into the 50 more rather than making the most of uh, those centre clearances. So obviously, that didn't necessarily go into their favour very well. And Ruck Tats, well, it was a dominant performance by Harndorf in the Ruckman today with 57 taps uh, to Mount Barker's 33. So, uh, yeah, definitely Harndorf did all the ne uh, necessary work to get the tactical advantage on the field. There you go. Young Precise. Young Indy, the 500 man. Well Thank done. Well, the important time of the day, I suppose, the votes and put your head on the block. So, in the Jarrett uh, Player of the Year, I've come up with these guys. One vote, and as they said, young forward, kick four goals, and certainly excitement machine. And like if football's not his main game, I'd hate to think if it was. Benny Salt, I gave one vote. Two votes, the captain we just spoke to, I thought was very good in the midfield, and just controlled proceedings, and just leads by example. Dylan Madsen, and three votes, and I think this guy bobbed up all around, and was once again uh, all over the ground, creativity, kicked a couple of goals, was Sammy Hayden. And a couple of honourable mentions there, guys who've just missed out and also, uh, yeah, and uh, also I'm not. Very good also, but uh, Harndorf, a dominant performance.